All right, Sergeant. Thank you so much. You and Wani with a magnificent job and a long evening of college football. Tonight, we will put the period on a shakedown Saturday here in the desert on FS1. The Arizona Wildcats are taking the field. They meet the Pac-12 favorite at the beginning of the season, Washington, tonight. Hello again, everyone. Tim Brando, happy to have you with us. A little Pac-12 after dark on a shakedown Saturday that began with the likes of Sam Ellinger and Jalen Hurts, later with Tua Tonga Valoa lighting it up. Jake Fromm goes down with the Georgia Bulldogs. And then Joe Burrow with another record performance for the LSU Tigers against Florida. Tonight, in this matchup, the West Coast's Heisman hopeful candidate of a year ago, Khalil Tate is healthy, but he'll be going up against a transfer portal star for this Washington team that also has designs on a big, big night, and we're talking about Eason, who is big time. This may be the best tandem that we've seen in any game tonight, Spencer. That's right. Arizona, though, Timmy, is experiencing a resurgence in their production at the quarterback position, mainly because of Khalil Tate. His dual threat capabilities are desert hot right now, I can tell you. Take a look at what happens when they combine motion, play action, and formation. The impact on the linebackers and the safety and run support. They're both involved. Castillo's in motion here to create that teacup, but watch the eyes of the linebacker and the safety. The safety in particular locked in on the play action. That's the toss sweep action. The back has to go that way. They have to mirror him, but they lose Brian Castillo, the last guy in that teacup or the bunch formation. He's wide open for a touchdown. That kind of production hurts. Ultimately, Jacob Eason on the opposite side, he doesn't need deception or formation. He's got a howitzer for an arm, but he could use some help from somebody other than Aaron Fuller. Washington is a team looking to rebound and put themselves back in the hunt. Arizona is perhaps playing their biggest game since the 2014 Territorial Cup. The coach and Coley will be talking to you when we return to the desert. We welcome you back to Arizona Stadium. Prior to kickoff and just moments ago, our Coley Harvey downstairs with Coach Sumlin. All right. T thanks a lot, Tim. Coach, uh, you're about to see, we're about to see Khalil Tate here. A lot of the country has not seen the 2019 version of him. Right. What are people going to see tonight? From well, him? hopefully we'll see a good version of it. You know, he's been pretty good the last week. He's coming off an injury and uh, threw it pretty well last week. Had a good week of practice. I think the, the big thing is, not just him, but 
getting J.J. Taylor. We'll see where he is. If, if, if he can go tonight, which he's had a good last couple days, I think he can make a difference in this game. Yeah, now, the other thing is you've got this crowd. This is possibly the biggest game that you've had at Arizona the last uh, four or five years. What do you tell your players about controlling their emotions? Yeah, it's it. You know, we, you, we're playing football, man. You, you, you're you used to this, right? We went on the road last week in a sellout place in Colorado. These guys have been handling it loud and, and help us win. All right. Thanks very much. Best of luck to you, Coach. All right. That was the coach. I'm Coley. Back to you, Tim. All right, Coley. Thank you. Washington won the toss deferred, so Arizona will receive. Tim Horn will boot it away, the freshman for the Huskies. And back deep, J.J. Taylor, and he'll let this one go through for a touchback. And Arizona will begin at their own 25-yard line. And, yeah, he mentioned both Tate having a good game. I'll say so. 31 of 41 for 404 yards. First Arizona quarterback to do that since Anu Solomon threw for 520 against California in 14. You see, though, there will be some movement in that up front with... Uh, some movement in that offensive line with Peyton Fears moving, and J.J. Taylor is back after being injured. Only carried it one time, Spencer, a week ago for four yards, and then was taken out of the game. But we saw him yesterday, and he looked sharp in their fast Friday practice. Yeah, that leg wrapped up a little bit, bandaged tight, but they're going to be looking for Cody Crease at number 76, the right guard, to help him out. They've got athletic guards play. And Taylor right away takes it up the middle for a gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Kyler Manu with the stop, though you see those numbers that we mentioned against Colorado for Khalil. Missed the UCLA game with a hamstring. Has also had an ankle problem, and there goes Taylor again to the field side. Oh, yeah. and look at that. Off for a first down, 45-yard line and beyond. He looked like he did yesterday in a brisk beat through. That's kind of what they missed last week. And then when he's out, Timmy, this offense is not the same, particularly in the run game. If they can establish that, then they get their pace and tempo going. They are a dangerous team. Manu and Molden collaborated on the stop. It's first and ten. Great field position now for Arizona. Drew Dixon's coming at wide receiver up at the top of your screen, number one. They'll use a variety of backs. Gary Brightwell is not dressed for tonight's game, but that means they'll, they'll use four instead of five. Now, Tate, this looks like a busted play. Stop behind the line of scrimmage. Defensive move there by Asa Turner coming up from safety. This is a defense that relies heavily on its linebacking core, trying to replace the likes of Ben Burr Kirvin on Zeruki. On Zeruki is the outstanding man up front. And the linebackers led by Bowman and Manu and then safeties they've got so many of them almost a nickel set every time Miles Bryant is the leader back there a real stick man at strong safety well if Arizona doesn't bust plays they can test that young back in Cameron Williams in particular corner well beautiful yep. move by Joe Tryon number nine coming through that time Spencer and that's a loss of nine on the play. Yeah, Joe's the outside linebacker, and he's going to come. He's about 6'5", 262. Got a lot of range and height on him and length. And so when you get a guy that can get to the quarterback and affect you from the edge like that, that's what Washington has been missing. Remember, they're replacing nine starters on this defense. We're accustomed to seeing Washington very stout on the defensive side of the ball. But as you pointed out, Burke Kirvin's not there anymore. This is a new bunch. Third down and 21, and they'll go with a screen. After some pressure, and J.J. Taylor takes off. He gets a lot of it back. Still will be eight yards shy of the necessary yardage for a first down. Keith Taylor, the cornerback, runs him down. They just got to get consistency at the quarterback position. You know, when you look at tape, you'll see Khalil Tate do some outstanding things and then inexplicably a busted play. And more often than not, Timmy, just from what I'm surmising, it's usually him making a mistake in those situations. At least that's what it looks like to me. Little well, pickup of 13 on that play, but a punt formation. Matt Aragon will punt it away. 6'5 redshirt junior from here in Tucson. There's a block it right up the gut. It was blocked, and it was it was on Zarike that did it. 95 right up the gut. That was a papoom. He and Bowman, Ryan Bowman, got on top of it for the recovery. So right up the gut. Onzerike comes up with a big play. Levi Onzerike in a gap formation or what they call an eye. He's not lined up over the top. He's in the middle just to the right of the center. And he gets in there and splits the two up backs. Their job with the personal protectors is to protect the punter. And he got through and split them both. That's outstanding technique by Onzerike. Chris Peterson's teams through the years going all the way back to Boise State have specialized in special teams. Savan Ahmed is in the backfield and will tote it for the first play. 
for Washington. He gets it inside the 35 to the 34. Tony Fields, the Will linebacker and leader of that defense, making the stop. This is a Washington offense that does have Mateo Mele in for Nick Harris, who's their leader. Senior center is out for tonight's game. Pacelli and Fuller are guys to look at, but Hunter Bryant, the outstanding go-to tight end, along with Cade Otten, 87, when they go double tight end look, are all candidates for the ball. Here's McClatcher going the jet sweep route, and he'll get it to the line to make for a first down. And the quarterback, Jacob Eason. We talked about him from Stevens, Washington, was recruited heavily before opting for Georgia. You know the rest of that story. What happened with all of the competition that they had in Athens, and he made his way here, sat out the season. He did have five key drops last week. That was short of a first down, so third and two rather than the first down made, and Ahmed is stopped behind the line yet again, so it'll be fourth down and a yard to go. Yeah, and for his part in that, Jacob Eason has to kind of attenuate his passes a little bit. He's got the big arm, as we noted at the top of the show, but he can't throw every pass that way. When they go deep and try to create big plays, yeah, you can use that howitzer, well, but the underneath stuff, you got to be a little bit more judicious with your passes. Well, it looks like they're going for it. Yep. I thought they got a poor spot on the big on the jet sweep earlier, but now it's fourth and one. Ahmed again, the lone setback. They go with the double tight end look. And it is Ahmed borrowing ahead, and it's going to be close. Maybe the ball came loose. It. it may have come loose. Or they just got to stop. He was stoned at the line of scrimmage. Washington was 5 of 5 on fourth downs prior to that stop. I thought for a moment maybe the ball had come out the way the Arizona defensive front reacted, but that was just a magnificent charge up the gut. Everyone sold out. Every linebacker and safety were up at the line of scrimmage. Marcel Yates, defensive coordinator for Arizona. His bunch really stepped up. Impressive for this stop unit, Tim, in an opening defensive stand. By the way, Marcel works for Coach Pete while at Boise State. Familiarity does breed <laughs> contempt. How about some Tillman's takes as we come back? Well, as far as Arizona's concerned, Tim, it's really all about the football. When they've got it, they've got to get explosive plays, and they run to set those explosive plays up. Now, ultimately, Washington's got to be assignment conscious, particularly when they get in that three or bunch formation. It's tough to sort out.
J.J. Taylor gets ahead for about three. We'll call it second and seven. Miles Bryant making the stop. He was all over the place. And that loss to Stanford, eight, eight tackles, four solo, all Pac-12 first team, a season-high nine tackles against BYU. They gave him four, so we'll call it second and six. Oh, nice. Yeah, that, that jet action again with Tavian Cunningham, but again, the assignment was handled nicely by Keith Taylor, who stayed at home. That's a loss of three for Arizona. Yeah, that was J.J. Taylor, though, with a nice block on the outside. He tried to do his part. Again, Washington just up front being very smart, disciplined defense this is. They are tremendous at diagnosing plays in real time, Tim. They just had a problem getting off the field yep. against Stanford yeah, last third week. Third downs were tough for them. And we've got a pre-snap flag. Our referee is Mike McCabe. Our replay official tonight, Dave Lambros of the Pac-12. Offside, defense number 55, using abrupt action to cause... The offense to false start. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Uh, Coach Pete not happy with that call <laughs> against uh, Ryan Bowman, one of his leaders. Junior from Bellevue, Washington, by way of uh, Bradenton, Florida, and the IMG Academy. Third down, four. After the penalty. Taylor remains the setback. Now moves into the slot. He's free on a shallow cross. Now more pressure, and he just has to unload it. Outstanding defensive work by the Huskies there. They had that one diagnosed. Taylor was really his only option, and uh, Khalil didn't look that way. Asa Turner was putting on some heat, and it'll be a punt formation for the Wildcats. Yeah, he was looking for J.J. Taylor to come in underneath on the shallow crossing route, but Brandon Wellington, the inside linebacker, was in his hip pocket the whole way. Great job by Washington looking at their formations and sorting out who is that third defender? Because that's the one they're going to have to identify. That's where Arizona wants to go. Aaron Fuller. Got a return for a touchdown. Oh, back yeah. This one wasn't blocked. And Fuller will take it off the bounce. And he is spun down immediately. 41-yard kick. A two-yard return. Xavier Bell was down there to put the stop on it. Jacob Eason and that Huskies offense on display. When we return. It's the nightcap after dark in the Pac-12. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, official drink of Fansville. Well, that was quick work. <laughs> that was nice. Pretty pictures from our Mitch Riggin. <laughs> Been busy with baseball of late. Back in the director's chair. What is that near-capacity crowd on hand at Arizona Stadium? Family weekend. And uh, 
highly anticipated. They always draw well at home when Washington comes to town. Here's Sean nice. McGrew cutting it back the other way. Another explosive play in the run game. All the way down inside the 30 and wrestled to the ground at the 26-yard line by Lorenzo Burns. Well, it's a nice one-two combination. If it's not a man, it's McGrew. McGrew does a nice job here of coming back. Watch the center. Offside comes and pulls underneath, and he's reaching up to the next level defender who he drives right out of the mix. That was Cole Schooler at the Mike linebacker. He's pretty strong, Timmy, but he got pushed out of the center of that defense. That's why you had the big void there in the middle of that D. 44-yard gain for the Huskies. McGrew again. Nice stop and return. And let's get a quick game break back in Los Angeles. Here is Amber Theo Harris in Los Angeles. All right, Tim, number seven, Florida at number five, LSU. After the Gators took a 28-21 lead in the third quarter, LSU has reeled off three straight touchdowns, including this Joe Burrow to Jamar Chase 54-yard touchdown. That's Chase's second of the game. And LSU has a 42-28 lead with under two minutes to go in the fourth, Tim. Okay, Amber, thank you. Here, Hunter Bryant, the tight end on the receiving end. Gets it to about the 20-yard line and Look at the weekend storylines on this shakeup Saturday. Georgia goes down. Congratulations to Will Muschamp and his yeah. team with his third string quarterback winning. Oklahoma edging Texas in the Red River rivalry. And Penn State hanging on at Kinnick Stadium, taking out Iowa. The Big Ten is open for bids between Wisconsin, Penn State, and of course, Ohio State. Ahmed is now in the backfield. And he'll carry it forward for another healthy gain on third down. Enough for a first down just outside the 15 of Arizona. Tony Fields and Tristan Cooper, 31, collaborating. Yeah, Tristan Cooper plays that spur position, number 31, Tim. He was a little bit slow, although he's got kind of a dual responsibility out there, containment. But when that run goes up inside of you, it's his job and responsibility to shut it down. He was just a little bit too late to the party. Coming off a career-high performance in tackles you're, you're against right. the Buffs a week ago. Out of the eye formation this time. Nice job. Man. He is stopped by Jace Whitaker, 17, the youngster from Oceanside, California, one of the seniors on this club, and it's a loss of five. He's not the biggest guy in the world, only 185 pounds, but that senior wisdom come into play on that particular play right there. Whitaker, the boundary cornerback. You know, a lot of times when you got a lot of field, you see the more athletic guy over there, but he's physical because the boundary is where you have to be most physical. They'll go out of the shotgun now. Have not been able to quite find Aaron Fuller, number two. Andre Bocelli also is a go-to wide receiver. Out of the backfield, they go to McGrew. He brings it in. Good tackle in space. Made by Lorenzo Burns, number two. Didn't exactly wrap him up, but hit him hard enough to get him down, and we've got a flag down. I think that may be J.B. Brown, the defensive end, that may have been off a couple of them on that front for Arizona. Offside, defense, number 99. Five-yard penalty replay, second down. Miles Tabasoa, number 99, who's sharing time with Fenton Connolly up front. Yeah, 12 and 99 jump. You can see both of them there. You pick them. They both saw something that made them a little bit anxious, but you got to hold your water, big fella, in there. <laughs> second down and 10. Just a three-man rush. Eason. Wow. Overshot his intended receiver, but Shelly that time, he does have, I think part of the issue for some of these receivers at times, Spencer, is the velocity on his passes. They had a lot of drops last week. You see the red zone story, this season only 52%. Part of that, drop passes. That's why I'm tracking that points per possession. This is an important possession here, because in the loss that they had to Stanford, it was 1.3 points per possession on 10 possessions. And other than turnovers, that's the most significant stat that you can look at that points toward victory and defeat. They need a touchdown, not a field goal. Third and 10 for Eason. On the cross, it's Aaron Fuller. He stops shy of the necessary line to make. Christian Roland Wallace, number four with the stop. It's just a gain of five. And so on fourth down, Washington will be in a field goal scenario. So the Arizona defense of Marcel Yates gets the job done again. He, he, he felt coming in, creating turnovers, and getting the crowd going, which they've already been able to do with a stop on fourth down 
would be an essential against his old mentor, Chris Peterson. We asked him basically if he'd end up rushing a little bit more. And now because Nick Harris is not the center, I'm thinking that maybe he should get, get after him a little bit and see if they can sustain up front for this Washington front. Peyton Henry is now 12 for 12 in field goals. And he gives Washington the early lead. Shortly after we got word of our assignment, we began to hear about a hot ticket finally at Arizona Stadium. It had been a while, but Washington will do that in terms of the desert fans. Here's why the Washington Huskies mean a great deal in the Pac-12, and Arizona is smelling it. Their neighbors uh, from Tempe got a big win against Wazoo earlier today, and they're hoping for another territorial cup that would remind some of the one in 2014. Tony Fields, you see right there, said he was going to go on and tweet about it last night. We need you folks. We want you to be involved and be engaged. And it doesn't hurt to have family weekend here. And notice back at our hotel, it was pretty packed with a lot of partisans that were looking forward to tonight. And, you know, this is a program, Spencer, that has had a lot of success going all the way back to the Desert Swarm oh, and Dick yeah. Tomey. Dick Tomey. Yeah, the, they scored a lot of points during that era. Dick Tomey was one of the great ones and had this wide-open offensive attack. We haven't seen anything like that since, of course, Kevin Sumlin. I love the conversation you had with him just the other day. This was the perfect place oh, for yeah. him to land because of what he does and what assets were oh. already here, chief among them, Khalil Tate. Uh -huh. You know, Rich Rodriguez uh, did win a title here took his team into the Pac-12 championship in Santa Clara five years ago fell short could not sustain it that's been the issue here at Arizona as you see Khalil dumping that one away sustaining the success over time talk about sustaining success how about Terry Francona <laughs> member of the Arizona World Series college world series team back in the early 80s on 1980 and, and we, 81 he was a player here that familiar dome and when you see it man it's just <laughs> something about he commands your attention his presence one of the great characters in the game jerry kendall was one of the great college baseball coaches ever in the sport and uh have great success here the likes of joe mcgrain to go along with terry francona mcgrain a few years later that pass is thrown away by tate yet again lots of pressure from washington up front It'll be third down and ten. Impressive that Washington is able to bring pressure again once a, because they don't have a lot of great speed on this defensive side. They're disciplined right now. And they're in that rare situation where they had to replace nine guys on the back end. Michael Wiley, the freshman from Houston, 
Drake Jesuit High School in the backfield. On third and ten. Out of the shotgun, Tate. He got him wide open. He sure did. Off the curl, it's Cedric Peterson, the redshirt senior. Out of Moreno Valley, California. That's a first down. Found a little soft spot in zone. The inside of the three receivers to the inside. Just pivot. Split the difference between those zone defenders. And they're running and chasing right and now. Going, offense, going quickly <laughs> with the wide receiver screen to Castile. And that's a loss of a couple. And there's, you see, Noah Mazzoni. He's been around the block a time or two. Yeah, he didn't take any mess either. I mean, I, I love his directness, and he was so transparent with us. We appreciate that. And he's one of the good guys in the business, man. Well, spent time uh, recently in the Pac-12, of course, at UCLA as well. A little blitz. Let's see if Tate can handle this. Yeah, with the legs, he decides to think better of it and slide down in front of Gordon, number 19, Kyler Gordon, one of the cornerbacks. What a gain of a yard. Third down and nine coming up. Yeah, third down and nine. Well, we're going to call it third and 11. I beg your pardon. It was a loss of two on the prior play. Tate again rolling towards the field side. Great defense. They covered him up big time. Yeah. Back in. Tryon was coming and there was just no one there. And some disgruntled fans not happy, but that was a coverage play. The Washington perimeter had everyone blanketed. Look, everybody on the three-by-side tries to get an inside release and then the switch route underneath and then the over. Everybody covered, locked up and press. It's kind of an inside technique. Follow him in his hip pocket. That's just a tremendous job all the way around, Timmy. Every defender had him covered up. No place for the Wildcats to go. Oregon will boot it away with Aaron Fuller in single safety back at the Washington 23 yard line already one blocked tonight by the Huskies, but they can only get three out of it. Here comes Fuller with some room to run and a tight roll back down the sidelines. A healthy return will give the Huskies quality field position. 38 yard boot, 16 yard return. Not since that opening jaunt by JJ Taylor have the Wildcats done much. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Bud Light, reminding you to keep it crisp responsibly. Under the beautiful moonlight here in Arizona, Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman, Coley Harvey. There you see the backup quarterback, Grant Gunnell. This is a youngster from the Woodlands in Texas. Highly thought of, highly recruited, and Khalil Tate, as great as he is, Spencer, if he stumbles, 
the leash may be shorter than some might think. I think right now Washington is just doing a great job with their coverage, but I would not be surprised if we saw the backup. John McGrew coming out of the backfield, and again, well read by Marcel Yates' defense. That's Tristan Cooper, who's been all over the place earlier in this game. Well, they've got a lot of weapons, that's for sure. And again, not as much as they've had in, in the past. But the thing that I like about Washington, the way they function, the way they operate, they're not going to make mistakes. They're not afraid to go empty sometimes, occasionally, when they've got their big guys in the tight end. But right now, it's a one-by-three formation. They're going to take a pass. Oh, uh, Eason Apparently, induced yeah. that. He sure did with his cadence. He had a free play. Now, you see the play by Justin Beltman made number 86 coming through, the senior. Redshirt senior, but this could be an offside. Offside. Defense, number 99. Five-yard penalty. Replay, second down. He did all that with Caden Spencer. Yep, he really did. And, and that's that's what you've got to be able to do and keep the defense on his back heels. You can see him there. We got him circled for you. Yeah, Coach Wilder, big fella, got to pull it back. Just got to be aware. Now that's more penalties against Arizona already tonight than they had throughout the entire game with Colorado a week ago. Oh, this is nice. They bunched up and then came out of it and created on the opposite side. Let's see if Arizona can deal with it. McGrew. Coming up, uh, Colin Schooler, number seven. He's dropped a little weight. He is uh, rather spelt, looking good. Very active out of Dana Point, California. I like what Washington's formula is so far. You know, that previous series, Sean McGrew had that 44-yarder. That was the longest run of his career. They've got to get him going and get some consistency there. And then the throw game will open up for him. Major options at tight end and Aaron Fuller, numbers one and two respectively. And Hunter Bryant is the key. He's healthy for the first time in a long time. He's a staple there. Very athletic. He's in. Let's this one fly, and it's incomplete. Aaron Fuller targeted that time. Well defended by Lorenzo Burns. Yeah, Lorenzo Burns was just all over him. You can, again, I think in this press look where Lorenzo Burns gets a nice job, gets the hand, maybe a little bit to the face, and some incidental contact there. But he does make an effort to turn back as Burns and locate the ball as well, removing all doubt that he's playing great defense. Thought it was, number two on number two, double deuce in the red one that bad. thought it was interesting. Marcel Yates told us after that loss to Hawaii, he learned a lot about his team. He loves to play that press man, Spencer, but he learned a lesson about uh -oh. that. There's a mock punt. It's recovered by Washington yet again. Another turnover off the muff, and it is recovered by the Huskies. Sometimes it's a self-inflicted wound. Your guy's being blocked in the back, and you're trying to come down and make a play. But it's so difficult, Timmy. It might have been Thomas Reed in front of him, the third, number 16. He's trying to wave it, calling for the fair catch. But number 16 gets right yeah, in his did. way. That's friendly fire that yep. got him. And on top of it. The ball was legally touched by the receiving team. Recovered by the kicking team. First down. And I believe that was Kyler Gordon, 19, that came out of there with it. Kyler Gordon with the recovery. Ahmed remains the setback. And another golden opportunity. Nice job. Right up the middle with Ahmed again. Gain of four. Christian Young, number five, with the stop. It'll be second down and goal. Well, you've got a blocked punt and a muffed punt for Arizona. They have put their defense in harm's way. They're blocking the ball extremely well right now with Hunter Johnson and company, Timmy. Fantastic job of trap blocking his Washington inside game. Beeson with the play fix. Got a lot of room to the right hand Great. side. He dumps it underneath, but it's well defended. Great recovery. Chico McClatcher on the on the catch, and then Colin Schooler leveled him. That's a loss of a yard. Yeah, Colin Schooler really came for that Mike position, and once he figured out the ball was going to be released, he didn't waste any time driving upfield and protecting that territory called the end zone. Make sure the quarterback knows he's around as well. This crowd is into it. Yeah, there's a lot of speed on this defense, Tim. That's what I want to see unleashed here. Just, just because of the nature of the way they play the game, they can play at a much higher level. They go twin tight end to the right side. Ahmed stopped in his tracks. A very physical group up front in the red zone. That was Anthony Pandy, another guy that could be very productive in that will linebacker position when Fields is not there.
and Bandy is. Take a look there at Marcel. And, and I'll tell you, when you get inside the green zone, that's five yards inside. Speed and quickness is more important than size and strength. If you're trying to just lay forward and get one and one yard line, then maybe the size helps you. But not in this scenario. These guys can shoot gaps, play off technique, and Kevin Sumlin knows he's got athleticism on this defensive unit. That's why they play to it. Well, they're going to force another field goal for Don't hit the a currently perfect Peyton Henry, who's 12 out of 12 this season in field goal tries. It's only a game. Offense, number 47. Five yard Pepsi. Still fourth down. I don't know if you saw it earlier today in a game that we had on FS1. Baylor actually needed a chip shot but had a severe angle left from the right hash. They were trying to take a penalty for delay of game, and Texas Tech would have none of it. They, they said no. And ultimately, the game was won in overtime earlier today by the Bears. They're now 6-0. and We'll see them next week against Oklahoma State. This is from 26. And a Baker's dozen in succession, but a win for Arizona. Two botched plays in special teams. One, a blocked punt. A boom. Ryan Zerke. And then the mock punt by Barry Hill. Self-induced. Yes. Friendly fire. Gordon with the recovery, but Washington can't get it done in the red zone. And they call on Henry, the sophomore from Danville, California, to put it through, and it's now a six to nothing game. Well, Tim, and that was what we were talking about at the top of the show. When we talk about points per possession. Listen, this Washington team, gratuitous as it may have been, found themselves with great field position. But again, the bibliography and footnotes are 10 possessions last week in the loss, 1.3 point per possession. They have got to improve that because this team can score lights out in a hurry. Well, we'll see what Khalil Tate can do on this next possession. He's been thoroughly confused by Washington's looks about finding guys during his progression underneath. J.J. Taylor is again back deep. This one squibbed. You see if it goes out of bounds, and it does. So a big break for Arizona. They'll get it at the 35. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. By rule, the ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. Well, we've got two of the best teams in the country for you next weekend. First on a special Friday night, Justin Fields in third-ranked Ohio State will take on Northwestern. Coverage beginning at 7.30 Eastern on FS1. They may be better than three next week. Then next Saturday, Heisman Trophy frontrunner Jalen Hurts and number six, Oklahoma, <laughs> host West Virginia in the big noon Saturday game of the week on Fox and the Fox Sports app. J.J. Taylor is in the backfield out of the shotgun. Burrows ahead and runs right into Jackson Sermon, 43, the freshman from Bothell, Washington, and a flag down. Well, they've had a lot of negative plays, Spencer, on first down here in the early going, Arizona. This is going to be holding. It might have been Cody Creason. Offense, number 76. Yep. 10-yard penalty. Replay first down. Now, Robert Conjol unable to go at guard, so the movement was made in their forward wall. Both of these teams have been affected in their offensive line. Washington's without their starting center as well. Yeah, here's number 76, Cody Creason. He's the right guard. He does a nice job, but he holds, and that's that's the problem with it. When a guy gets penetration upfield, sometimes you have to mask that, and the only thing you can do to protect your quarterback, particularly if it's a pass, is to hold him. J.J. Taylor. Great defense. And they're on the stretch play. You can't get wide against these guys. You just can't. Ariel Nagata, 52, will be credited with the stop. But at this stage, the depth and width of the field is being covered very nicely by Jimmy Lake's defense. We've come to the end of one. The Huskies taking advantage of faux pas in the special teams, limiting the fireworks on a full moon evening in the desert of Tucson.
get ready to start the second. It was all about pressure for Khalil Tate in the first. Well, the thing he did, Timmy, he was able to not elude the pressure. It was the coverage on Washington's back end that did the job. Listen, there's nothing complex about what they're doing. They're just playing straight man coverage on the back end. He's got to not let that pressure get to him and make quality decisions. He had to throw the ball away at least three times in the last three series. Michael Wiley and J.J. Taylor, they go with two backs. And it's Taylor ahead to the 30-yard line. So a good play on first down. Brandon Wellington would stop. You look at the numbers in the first quarter. Notably, the big running play, 44-yarder for Ahmed. to help set up three. And then, of course, you know, this Arizona defense has been given a short field to work with many times because of the botch plays and special teams. Third down and 15. Behind the sticks again, Arizona. Boy, it was right there. I mean, that's just uh, not being accurate. He'd love to have that one back. Castile was the intended receiver, and he had plenty of room. Yeah, Brandon McKinney, the cornerback, was back there instead of uh, Cameron Williams, who's typically back there, 23. But you can see he had plenty of protection, nothing imminent in his face. He's just off the mark. Yeah, he looked like he was limping off. Someone stepped on his foot as he... Uh... But, you know, Tim, listen, when you got that kind of protection and you're worried about somebody stepping on your foot, you got to deliver that ball on time. He's short on that one. That ball yep. looked like it had a string on the end of it. Agre agreed. Aragon will uh, punt it away. Here they come. Oh, we got it. Wow. Yeah, well, I don't know how they missed it. I don't it. know how he got that out of there. And that one's muffed. Washington dropped it. Arizona's got it. And it's number 37 on top of it. Xavier Bell. Muffed by Aaron Fuller. Normally very sure-handed. And how they missed the block is the first thing we're going to see. I think the official didn't get ticked, did he? <laughs> Somebody ran over him, but hope he's all right. Again, Plaza. I don't know how that ball just got went right underneath. That's Pleasant. Back Kamari up Pleasant. Back. Yeah, yep. I was just looking to see what angle he was coming at. Kamari Pleasant laid out for it, tried to take it off the toe, which is typically what you try to do. But, man, I don't know how that ball got out of there. Talk about a game of inches. What might have been and what is. Arizona will have it. We had a lot happen on that play a moment ago. It should have been blocked. And then the umpire, Timothy Schroeder, is on the receiving end of this hit from 
Lorenzo Byrne is going down. Burns is going down in coverage. What's the head hit? Oh my. He did get up. We're happy to say he's still out there and able to work after being tended to. But then we had the muffed. Yeah, he is going off, we're told, but you can see he's going off on his own power. Yeah, it was but, good for but, the ump is good for the athletes too, man. Yeah. You, you take him off. And, and then the muffed punt by Fuller, which means Arizona's got it again, and still more of the same for Khalil Tate. Just a look of confusion. I mean, it's like deer in the headlights right now, Spencer. I think the only way you're going to get success with him is get some design runs. Listen, the shoehorning them into a pocket passer last year didn't work. So now they, they found the groove, obviously missed the UCLA game with the hamstring. But when he came back and got those 400-plus yards him, it was because they established the running attack first. Don't try to force the issue. You've got a four-by-one look here. If he can't get find open space in here, he's got issues. Four out of ten for only 21 yards, and Michael Wiley gets ahead for a yard, a yard maybe two, and that is all. Ariel Nagata with the stop, number 52. And again, it's third down and long. They've been in negative plays on first down and third and longs seemingly all night here in the early going. On third and nine, they'll go with Wiley. And he's ahead to the 32. And again, you have this kind of field position, fourth and short coming up. Nagata again with the stop. Be curious to see what they decide to do here. Well, on the previous play, Kevin Sumlin had a streaking receiver down the hash mark. And again, I know it was a design option in zone, uh, uh, inside zone read. But the bottom line is if you come to the line of scrimmage and you see that there's no one there, you ought to be able to get out of that play. That play should have a kill switch so that you can take advantage of where they're not on the field. Well, they're going to kick it. Lucas Haversick has got a big leg. He's so good on kickoffs. Very rarely, if ever, is there a return on a kickoff. This will be a 50-yard attempt. 53 is his longest. And this one is a quality draw. Wow. Like a long two-iron from Ben Hogan. Fans didn't like it when he got on the field. They like it now. 6-3 Huskies. Someone down, someone down. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman, Coley Harvey, happy to have you with us. Pac-12 after dark, and we've had some mayhem in the special teams area so far in tonight's game. That has been the story, but no one has been able to scratch pay dirt. 
Sean McGrew is back deep. Everson can really boot it. Yet another touchback as he booms it through the end zone. And with news on the umpire who was knocked out of the game, at least for now, here's Coley. Yeah, Tim, I just learned that he is actually out. He is uh, under the concussion protocol is what I was yeah, just told on the sideline. Uh, uh, they just learned that he not only got you know, uh, hit so hard in that collision, but also he hit his head uh, there when he went down. Um, it's uh, certainly something that the officials are keeping their eyes on. Uh, when they get into the locker room, they'll check on him again. But for what I've heard just now, he is uh, he is certainly out. Of, he's under a concussion protocol. No worse for wear as he was making his way out. Good to see that he is going through the protocol, but they are minus an official. There is no alternate to put in there, so... Better safety, though, for us. Yeah. The, the striped shirts are going to be working a little harder. Nice Quick slant. That's Hunter Bryant. Beyond the 40 to the 41 yard line. That's a gain of 17 yards. And along with Cade Otten, you know, Hunter Bryant does a tremendous job. He, he's more of an H guy. You know, he's kind of like a big fullback, but he plays the tight end position as well. They'll move him all over the place, but in the past, it's been his availability due to health issues, and he's been injured a lot. So now, good to see him in and productive. Ahmed, the long shutback. Quick pitch towards the field to Savan. And he's out past the 45 to the 47 yard line. Trevon Mason, number 90, with the tackle. Washington. Game of five. Yeah, Washington enjoying playing in the phone booth. They had a little tight bunch formation there, and they're they're just playing, you know, just physical football and taking advantage of their size over this smaller front for Arizona. Should mention the center judge, Randy Campbell, has now moved into the position of Timothy Schroeder at umpire. For those keeping track at home, and I know Dean Blandino is back in our LA studios. And a beautiful pass. Hunter Bryant on the receiving end. Now there's Jacob Eason's big league arm on display, Spencer, right there. It was impressive, too, and Christian Young was back there in that banded position trying to cover him, number five. But too much separation there. That ball is on a line. It's a dart. It's a nice throw. Had some touch underneath it. But I'm telling you, that's pinpoint. That's what he brings, Eason. Just accuracy. He's outstanding. Redshirted a year ago after transferring from Georgia. He was injured in early 2017, you may recall before making that maneuver. All the riches of that position. That was a game of 22 on that passing play, and Ahmed is ahead to the 25 with a flag down. A little holding inside on Washington. Holding offense number 66. 10-yard penalty. Replay, first down. Bain Ivalu, 66. Henry Bain Ivalu who is the first to come up yep. if either guard or tackle the guilty party. Yeah, Fitton Conley was the guy that he was holding on that play. Number 91, he's trying to get a little rip under technique there. It gets held in the process, and the official flagged him for it. Good call. Well, back him up to the 41-yard line. First and 20. So he's trying to show some pressure, but he backed out of it. Let's see. Wow. There's Ahmed inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. Again, it's Mason, number 90, on the tackle. That's a gain of nine. Well, this front for Arizona is active, but again, when you show like you're going to pressure, then you back out of it, there are going to be natural gaps over those guards, and they're just gaping holes, and, and it just begs, run here, run here, run here. And that's exactly what Washington is doing. Maybe some run fits, some run blitzes or in order for Marcel Yates in this defense. Well, you know, he's going up against an old friend, too, and Bush Hamden, the offensive coordinator yeah. for Washington. They were both on the staff at Boise with Coach Pete. Let's see if that Howitzer can let loose. Easton had to just let it go. He was outside the tackle box. But again, great pressure coming from Arizona's Justin Beltnap, 86. Yeah, the one thing that Easton couldn't do was set his feet and get turned. When you're running to your left and you're a right-handed quarterback, in order to get that ball accurate, you've got to turn and set your feet. Not enough time to do it. And as you said, Belknap was right in his lap. That weak side defensive end position, boy, he was all over Easton. Third down, 11. Let's see if they can find either Aaron Fuller or Hunter Bryant. That two is his favorite target. That's Fuller. He's targeted Bocelli on one other occasion. Not much to the wide receivers available. 
Oh, the nice call. defense. Magnificent defensive play by Burns. Boy, they've been going after him, and he's been up to the task against Aaron Fuller so far. Yeah, he's impressive. He's not necessarily the biggest guy in the world. He's only about 175 pounds, 5'10". But look at this ball. It comes out. It's on a line. But watch number two. Stick that hand in there and punches it out. That's textbook defense right there. Keep it clean. The flag official in your back pocket. I'm just balling, baby. Well, does this surprise you? No, not at all. Fourth and 11. No, it doesn't go. surprise me. They're going to line up for the pooch, it looks like. Yep, Eason will pooch it. End over end and looking to get it bound. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty nice. It does, did get through there, though, and it's going to be. Good effort, though, man. Yeah, it was a great effort, no doubt about it. Oh, time for a quick game break. Speaking of Boise State, here's Amber Theo Harris in Los Angeles. All right, Tim, Hawaii at number 14, Boise State. Backup Chase Cord and at quarterback, and he connects with Khalil Shakir for the 33-yard touchdown. It's 24-7 Broncos late in the second quarter. Boise State, one of 14 undefeated teams left in the country, Tim and Spencer. Boy, oh boy, Amber, I'm so glad you mentioned that because most of those 14 teams are in the witness protection plan. <laughs> Most of them are getting no ink whatsoever. Mm. How about Baylor? Yep. How about Minnesota's beatdown of Nebraska? You have barely heard of those teams so far this year. Barely. That's Tilford 33. This is a kid that can get some tough yardage for Arizona. He's ahead for three. It'll be second down and seven. Think about that intellectual property, too, from Boise State. Kellen Moore is now the offensive coordinator with the Dallas oh, Cowboys. Yeah, how about that? You got some quarterback action there, man. And, some strong uh, DNA. We touched on the, the offensive coordinator for Washington, of course. Nathan Tilford stopped after about a yard. Speaking of that Boise team and what it was made up of, look at that staff members there. There's Chris, <laughs> the head coach, Marcel Yates, and up at the top left, Bush Hamden was a backup quarterback on that squad. Great great narrative. Narrative. He is. He's a, one of those rare individual coaches. He, he's got great vision. He's got great understanding. No, he's under a little bit of pressure right now because of the way they've been performing of late. But I really like this guy. Making some history, too. Uh -oh. oh, that ball's on the ground. That is a free ball. And it's picked up by Washington for a touchdown. Picked up by Brandon Wellington. Well, that's been really the story throughout this first half and it reared its ugly head yet again with this pressure we talked about deer in headlights that's what happened here to tape i mean that's just just unconventional and inexcusable to get rid of the ball with your left hand under that kind of duress i mean you, you just can't make those kind of mistakes backed up in your own end zone timmy that's the part IE that's coming through with the pressure spence number eight and i don't know what he was thinking there that's a huge error. And one that at this stage of his career should not be made. And we talked to him yesterday about that and the decisions that he's making. I said, how do you know when you're improving? He gave us a line, but I'm not so sure his evidence is backing it up today. Yeah. Henry with an extra point. Ah, a little gift after dark for the Huskies. Destination unknown as we pull in for some gas.
13 to 3 our score after the gift really on the turnover by Khalil Tate. We show you yet again Grant Cadell. The reason we do is because in our conversations it's pretty clear and by the way this kid's come in and played very well already this year when Tate couldn't go against UCLA. Um, Pac-12 freshman of the week in his first career start against UCLA so it'll be interesting to see if this continues with Tate just how much longer Noah Mazzoni is willing to go with Khalil. Well I think they believe that Khalil gives them their best chance to really exploit this particular defense because of his dual threat ability. But again, if you're turning the ball over, there's nothing that can uh, replace that. As just, you just can't make poor decisions like that in the end zone. It's like he was not even aware of where he was. And we're talking about a veteran player, senior out of Inglewood, has been beset by injuries. I'll never forget when Rich Rod was here and he came in. He wasn't really completely in shape. They got him in late. He put on an incredible show against Colorado, did it again. He's been off the charts against the Buffaloes whenever he's played them. Washington, not so much. J.J. Taylor again. I think more than anything, Kevin Sumlin was really happy to see J.J. Taylor back. And even Khalil told us, and we should mention, the young man was great with us when we had our conversation oh, yeah, with him fantastic. yesterday. Uh, I think having J.J. excited him to finally have him healthy. Very few times have both been healthy simultaneously here. Taylor, he stopped a yard shy of the first down, but clearly they've made a commitment to run the football at this stage and get vertical that way. Well, Timmy, I know Kevin Sumlin been around him and watched him manage quarterback situations, whether it was Johnny Menzel or here with Tate. I can just tell you from his body language, I don't think he is maximizing his full potential in terms of preparing his mental approach to the game because, again, he's been around too long to make some of the mistakes that he's made tonight. Now that's a first down. They get it done on the ground. Those of you that have been watching uh, the playoff series in baseball, the, those decisions on when to make a pitching change can sometimes be tumultuous. We'll see how it plays out. Still a lot of football left to be played, and Tate is an outstanding, explosive talent. Taylor, nothing doing this time as he spun outside by that Washington forward wall. Great work by the linebacking core so far in this game. Potawai has been outstanding and we've seen some of that defensive work from Tryon as well as Ariel Nagata. Potawai is a load man. He's just so quick and physical. A nice change. Up. They're coming with a safety blitz. Tate doesn't see it until late and has to unload. That was Miles Bryant coming. Pass was legal. The ball went beyond the line of scrimmage. Miles Bryant's coming off the back edge again. That's the second time they've run that blitz. Almost got to Khalil Tate on that one. Forced the issue. I've got to believe that Tate at least is now aware of the fact that they're bringing those slot blitzers. The way you beat that is to look to see if there's a safety over the top. Right now, there's a single high safety. The chance of them bringing pressure is virtually impossible. Now they've got him inside. They've got it picked up, though. Tate on the run. That's where he's really dangerous. Go. Little sprint out action. A good move that time. When he ad libs, he can be dynamic. That's a 15 yard gain to Stanley Berryhill, the walk on from Orange Lutheran High School here in Tucson. Well, instinctively, Tate moved away from the pressures that came his way. That's an outstanding job of improvising, but I want to see him do that with consistency. First, third down and long, Spencer, they've converted tonight. Michael Wiley is the setback. So the numbers around the line of scrimmage making running tough. Let's see if he can complete a pass against Cutler. Now he gets away from pressure and look out. I think the turf monster may have gotten him as he was preparing to slide. He does get eight yards on the play and it'll be second and two. Well, Tim, he's not going to have success really running the ball until he can force them to defend the pass accurately and effectively. The single high safety means there's numbers around the line of scrimmage. An extra defender. It makes tough running the football. Stop short of the first down. Owns Arike with the stop. No gain. Third down and two. Ball resting at the 40-yard line of Washington. J.J. Taylor back in the game for Wiley. So now it's man across the board. So you probably can have a nice run against this play because there's everybody's matched up in man. 
There are no double defenders to one side or the other. You know pretty much what everybody's doing. Outside technique. It is the third and short. They're going to go to the air. Tate in trouble. Nice. And again, he makes the play. It's complete. It's Joyner. It is touchdown. How about that response from Khalil Tate? Well, Washington only rushed three, dropped seven back, and it was man-man on coverage. All you got to do is Joyner's got to be one guy, and he does exactly that, Tim, on the back end. Tremendous job of getting inside, presenting his number. Elijah Molden, the free safety, was back there, and he beat him for the score. Aversick for the extra point. Khalil Tate used his legs and ad-libbed on two occasions, converted two third downs, and he got the touchdown to Joyner. Game on after dark in the Pac-12. Well, Tate with his 10th touchdown pass. Joyner with his second TD reception. He only had 36 yards on his first 12 pass attempts. And then on his 13th, he gets 40. And look out. There was a sense of urgency, Spencer, yep. in that last series for Khalil Tate. Well, perhaps it was an inflection point. Nine plays, 75 yards, three minutes and 24 seconds. That's the most plays, Tim, most yards, most time on a drive they've had this entire game. So, yeah, if that's the, the, that's the high watermark, they need to find a way to duplicate that. Aversick gets it through the end zone again. He is amazing, isn't he? Well, the Huskies have been bitten by the unranked over the last three years, haven't they? In 2017, their only two losses of the year came to unranked Cal and to Stanford. The following year, while ranked 15th in the country, Washington fell to Cal. And this year, the Huskies have a pair of losses to unranked North Northern California opponents. The last three seasons, Washington has lost more games to unranked teams than they have to ranked teams. And I think a lot of that is the byproduct, Spencer, of some of those early season matchups that can make or break your year. And to some extent, we've seen that 
with their brethren of the Pac-12. Think of Oregon, how good they looked last night against uh, Colorado, and yet that close loss to or Auburn early in the season has them behind the eight ball. That pass incomplete. Puka Nakua, the intended receiver. This is the freshman that they want to get more production from in tonight's game. That's what Bush Hamden, the offensive coordinator, was telling us when we talked earlier in the week. Timmy, back to your Washington point. And when they come here, they struggle, too. Remember back in, was it 2016, when they yep. were playoff bound and ran into some trouble here? This this place has provided some issues for Chris Peterson. Yeah, had to go to overtime. Had to, to get go that, to overtime. That one done. And Rich Rod's team struggled after that. And we got a penalty. Full start. Offense, number 66. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Ryan Ivalu again, the guilty party. You have these shakeups in your offensive line, and he's the first man up. He's like the number six guy that's going to come in in a variety of spots. Kirkland had his foot stepped on a little earlier. Nick Harris, mm -hmm. for those of you just joining us, is out. Mateo Mele, the freshman from right here in Tucson, is forced to be the starting center tonight. Yeah, remember now, Nick Harris was, a, was an all-pack 12 performer, so he's calling a lot of things there. Not being in the lineup there, that center position is important to this Washington Husky team. Second and 15, there you pressure go. There right you up go. the middle. <laughs> Big time from Harris. Jalen Harris, the redshirt sophomore. Jalen Harris. Does a nice job of coming off the edge against Trey Adams. That left tackle, man, he dips that shoulder, rips underneath, and 49 comes in. Hell bent for election. You can see Trey's trying to wheel of him. Once that hip gets open, you are beat on the edge. Outstanding job and pressure of getting to the quarterback right. and getting home. Spencer with a Spencerism. Hell bent for election. I like it. Third and 26 after the loss of 11. They're only one out of six on third down, and third and enormous here. Up against the play clock, that's a penalty. Yep. First charge timeout, Washington. This is a 30-second timeout. Well, they had a whale of a game down in Tempe earlier today. Arizona State winning yet again. I guarantee you, in this town and in this state, if... Kevin Sumlin's team can pull it off tonight. There will be some conversation about the Pac-12 South and how that territorial cup oh, in yeah. late November could uh, tilt the balance of fortune for either one of these schools. And how about the way that Herm is winning, man? I mean, you, you, you get in the phone booth and you beat Michigan State in a low score <laughs> in the fair, then you yeah. turn around and you outscore opponents. It's just amazing how he's able to pivot and turn. That's that's what you call quality coaching. Uh, the Leach, uh, Mike Leach's teams, uh, they, they don't lose three no, in a row. they don't. Uh, but they did today up in Tempe. Now this crowd, Tony Fields was talking to us about it. He wanted them involved, engaged. And boy, are they. They're playing awful deep here, Timmy, and I, I would love to see Marcel Yates come after him in this situation. But he's got 10-yard cushions on either side except the boundary. Got to get the shallow crossing underneath. the knee. Eason, there it is. is. Right on cue, and it's Puka Nakua. That's a great job of Nakua, man. Getting as much as he possibly could back, and that nice end cut. It's a long developing pass, so credit to that offensive line. It's a little bit patchwork right now for protecting long enough. Well, you really have to admire Eason's arm, though, don't yeah. you? Oh, man, listen, that, that's big-time throw right there. Fresh. Well, he was a freshman starter at Georgia. People forget that about him. Oh, yeah. And he had some injuries and had to battle out of that situation that forced him to lose out his job. And, of course, you know, these kids these days have options. So they, although he did transfer and had to sit out a year. Fair catch is taken by Barry Hill, and with what's coming up on Halftime, the State Farm Halftime Show, Mike Hill with the story. I'm Mike Hill coming up on the State Farm Halftime. The Red River Showdown lived up to its billing once again. A huge top 10 matchup in Death Valley, and South Carolina shocks Georgia in the biggest upset of the year. We'll tell you all about it at the half. Tim and Spencer. Look forward to that, and uh, as always, we thank you for your service, Mike. Good to have Wani back in the studio, too as our guys are from Big Noon Kickoff making their way back from DFW. There's Jacob Eason. And uh, you see the story of this game developing for their counterpart across the way, Kevin Sumlin. J.J. Taylor, the setback. Tate protection, incredible. Now, he escapes into the pressure. I don't, I don't get that. 
Running out of time. And instead of unloading Spitzer, he steps out of bounds. That's amazing to me. Just let it go. Throw the, you're outside the tackle box. Let it go. You're now taking a six-yard loss. See, it's all about angles. He, listen, he's basically a running back playing the quarterback position. Instinctively, you got to know where the pressure's coming from. You go counter to that. There's no way a defender's going to be able to pivot and go the opposite direction with skill like he has. I just don't understand some of the decisions he's making. Second and 16. Nice job. Over the middle and caught. Good for a first down. That's Cedric Peterson, 18. His second catch out of the slot tonight, 22 yards. That's one way to handle it. Go with the quick game and get this quick slant there. Get the decision out of his hand. Don't expect him to sit back there and survey. J.J. Nice Taylor bouncing off tacklers yards after contact. Ariel Nagato will get credit for the stop. Here's that previous play, Spence. Well, you can see it's right on top. You go up and high point that ball and pull it down. That's a quick slant route taking advantage of the zone coverage. J.J. Taylor spun down shy of the first down. <laughs> Tuli Latananoa was the man that made the tackle, number 91, in for Anzarukwe. Nathan Tilford is now in the backfield, third down and a yard to go. It's almost like Tate when he's under pressure, Spencer, is at his best. There's a quick pitch oh, into man. the boundary to Tilford, and he's got the first down. Stopped by Miles Bryant. Timmy, this is what you call putting the, the back cape on here. When you miss, you got to have your head up and make the tackle there. Keith Trailer. Yeah. Again, that back end has had some issues, man. You, you can't put your back under cape the on, back bro. cape. <laughs> yeah, he's got the back cape on, bro. Oh, thank you, boy wonder. <laughs> Nathan Tilford is ahead again, right up the gut. This youngster, a big body, a short yardage guy, and a Fontana, California redshirt sophomore. The one thing about Noah Mazzoni's approach with these. Really, they're five backs, and Brightwell is not dressed for tonight's game. Each one of them has a strength and a lot of nuance to their game. Dilford does a nice job on, on hugging those opportunities. Second and one. Feed and fanning. Yeah. Give it to him again and again. Down to the 23-yard line. And speaking of outstanding running backs, there's oh, yeah. old colleague of ours from a year ago, DeMarco Murray. Seven good solid years in the National Football League, over 7,000 yards First rushing. First time out. A little time with Petros Papadakis can get you out of broadcasting <laughs> quickly. Right? <laughs> well, he couldn't pass up this opportunity. Petros, one of the best. I know you love Petros. I love Petros. We all love him. But that guy right there, DeMarco Murray and Coach Sumlin, go back, have a connection at Oklahoma, of course, when... Oklahoma had uh, Mike Leach as their offensive coordinator. Kevin Summers was there year one coaching the receivers. And, and uh, of course, when he saw an opportunity to have a coach, why not bring a guy that's he, not uh, too far from around these parts? He gave you a few nuggets on these backs yeah. yesterday at the Fast Friday workout. Yeah, talked about how varied these backs are, how they are able to not just run the football, but catch the football as well. And, and as receivers, they do a nice job when they get into those bunch formations, although they wouldn't see it today. But against Colorado, you saw Castile and others get involved in that, that trifecta of receivers to confuse Colorado's back end. Petros, so there's Brightwell you see yeah, on the sidelines. I really like his game, not too, by the way. Well, they had a great game, Petros and uh, Shane Vereen and Justin Kutcher earlier today. That overtime nice job. Jump pass. short at the one yard line so the tight end targeted the junior 6'4 244 ahead for 23 yards that's urban myers digging that one that's the old tim tebow jump pass right yeah. there basically the old lee gross cup utah pass yep just hop and leap over those of you that uh, don't know what i'm talking about google <laughs> lee gross cup that's right outstanding broadcaster without michaels back in the day nice the jump pass set it up again get down to the doorstep your tight end gets wide open beats coverage underneath but you got to pay it off when you get on the doorstep right up the middle man blocking this is up mano and mano low man wins it's all about physics baby spencer jj taylor's been around a long time he was he was toting this thing five years
years ago. He's had a lot of injuries, medical red shirts and the like. He's running, as you like to say, with intentionality. Yes, sir. He was looking good in the end zone when he came blazing in there. We were watching him in practice. But watch him. The low pad level is going to win every single time. This guy's a compact, physical guy. And Kevin Sumlin's just loving it. He said, that's my boy right there, man. Third rushing touchdown of the year. And now 12 carries and 52 yards. And uh, Wilma setting it up off of that jump pass that uh, you touched on a moment ago. I was talking about the change here in Khalil Tate. Spencer, it almost seems that when he's pressured or forced to get rid of the ball quickly, that's when Tate is at his best. I think he is at his best because he's just that athletic, Tim. But I think through play calling, Kevin Sumlin can help affect that by getting the ball out of his hands quick with simple half-field, quarter-field reads and nothing more than that. It's when they ask him to sit back and be more of a pocket passer. That experiment failed last year. Yeah, yeah. Coach Mazzoni took a lot of heat because of it. But you can't shoehorn a guy into that, play to his skill set. I see that happen on the National Football League level all the time. Well, after a dubious start for both offensively, and particularly Arizona, it's turned into the scoring fest that we thought we might have. That ball is going all the way down to Phoenix, I think. <laughs> Quickly now, another game break. Here's Amber Theo Harris in Los Angeles. We have an update for you on the number 14 Broncos. Boise State adds another score. This one, a 13-yard touchdown run by Robert Mahone. And the undefeated Broncos up 31-14 on Hawaii at the half, Tim. Well, you know, Spencer, years ago, Boise State being undefeated this deep into the season, we would be discussing their chances of making the BCS championship. No question. We I mean, would. Certainly, you're talking to a Sooner who remembers the old Statue of Liberty play that got them upset Oklahoma in the Fiesta Bowl. Zabrinsky at quarterback. Yeah, you remember. Back in the day. I try to forget it. <laughs> Ahmed is in the backfield. Oh, oh did to. he get hit? J.B. Brown tagged him. Fields, boy, he was in there as well. That was a huge huge stick Tim he was all over him like a hobo and a ham sandwich man he was <laughs> whoo, that was a big time hit boom oh one and twelve collaborate feels first JV second second and nine Hotman again Tony Fields and Colin Schooler, the two linebackers. The will and the mic getting it done for Marcel Yates' defense. I don't think there's any question the crowd has been a factor, too, yeah, in the last quarter. They're feeding off the energy. There's no question about it. But again, I think Marcel Yates understanding that he can dial this up a little bit. The 17 points that this offense scored for them all came in the second quarter. And I think you should see a commissionable response from the defense. If the offense is stepping up, then you'll start to see them get a little bit more aggressive. Well, we've come to the break. A tremendous turnaround by Tate and this Arizona offense in the second quarter. Right now, let's get you back to Mike Hill in our Los Angeles studio. Mike, how do you do? I am doing just fine there. Welcome to the State Farm Halftime Show. I'm in the house in the L.A. studio alongside the coach Dave Wanstead. And good defense, special teams, blunders, and the uh, good and the bad of quarterback Khalil Tate, the story of your first half as we take a look at your halftime highlights sponsored by State Farm. Coach, what you got? Yeah, both offenses kind of got in sync the end of the second quarter there. Right here we're going to see, looks like Khalil Tate's trying to do a Patrick Mahomes, a left-handed <laughs> passer, Mike. I don't know, but it didn't work out. Didn't work. Easy score for Washington. But, hey, the, the good quarterbacks, they bounce right back after a miscue. Right here he does. He's accurate on his throw. They get a score out of it, even up, and we got ourselves a ball game. Uh, could Leo Tate 121 passing yards there in that first half. Now, give Arizona a lot of credit because they had two turnovers on special teams, but their defense really coming up, actually holding them to six points. Of course, you saw one of those touchdowns caused by the Tate turnover. Absolutely. Washington had one special teams miscue, and as you said, Arizona had two, and both defenses early in the game showed up ready to play. Unless you are mostly tuned in, you're not going to play great defense like that right away. 
both of them did. And then I think the offense has said, hey, these guys are going to, we're here to play. Right. Our defense is going to stop people. Let's, it's time for us to score. And that's kind of what's happened the second half. Now we got ourselves a ball game. Yeah, Arizona 4-1, best start since 2014, trying to keep that going uh, in the second half. Meanwhile, elsewhere around the Pac-12, well, the Pac-12 team, USC taking on number nine, Notre Dame, one of the best robberies in college football. Still, Keaton Slovis back, quarterback Tyler Vaughn's. And it's a three-point game here, Coach, in the fourth quarter. Absolutely. And, you know, USC fans don't want to hear it, but these kids are playing hard for Clay Helton. Yep, but not hard enough or good enough today as Ian Book gets in for the keeper. Notre Dame wins it 30-27. to Remember the Irish at the big house in two weeks. Number 15, Utah taking on Oregon State and Jake Luton. Yeah, I mean, Utah, hey, 4-1, and one, right? Your only loss is to USC. But this is a football team that I thought really – was going to be a, a possible champion in the Pac-12. We'll Devin see. Floyd right there. Lloyd, the uh, interception return. Utah wins it big, 52-7. to seven. Meanwhile, Washington State and Arizona State, and you heard the guys talking about Arizona State winning earlier today, Jaden Daniels. Uh, a, a, another close game. I'll tell you, all coaches talk about, they use the word finish, finish, finish. Well, guess what? Herm Edwards has his football team finishing games. 5-1 and one on the season. Big-time matchup between a pair of top-10 SEC foes that did not disappoint Florida LSU good one down in Death Valley third ranked George no longer unbeaten after a shocking loss against South Carolina we'll have the highlights of a major upset the biggest of the season in Athens coming up. Welcome back to the State Farm Halftime Show. 
What's been the good and bad of Khalil Tate in the first half? He, he, here's here's the, the bad. That was actually terrible. That led to uh, Washington's only turnover, but Khalil has uh, redeemed himself with a touchdown of his own, and his team is up 17-13 at the half. Mike Hill hanging out with the Coach Day wants that here in our L.A. Studios upset of the day. It, it's got to mm. be the upset of the year so far. Top five team going down at home in Athens, Georgia. South Carolina, number three, Georgia. And, Fourth quarter, Bulldogs down 17-10. Jake Fromm, Demetrius Robinson, six-yard score. That tied the game at 17. We went overtime, double overtime, Coach. And Georgia down by three, needs this to win it. You or know, at least tied it. They missed kicks. They they dropped passes. And, and Jake Fromm, Mr. Steady, threw interceptions. It was one of those days they were, I think, looking past South Carolina. Yeah, heard them today. South Carolina upsets number three, Georgia, 20-17. to Florida, LSU, this one turned out to be a really good game. Uh, they were down by seven. Florida was, but Kyle Trask, oh, bad interception right there. Derek Stingley comes up with the interception. Still a seven-point game, and now Joe Burrow, one of the best in the nation, ices it to a wide-open Jamar Chase. Tigers win it, 42-28. Yeah, Joe Burrows, three touchdowns again, 300 yards. Uh, Alabama, LSU setting up to be a good one later on this season. Alabama taking care of business against Texas A&M. Tua Tagovailoa to Najee Harris right there, and Tua, another big game. Absolutely, and, and that was impressive there. You know, he extended the play with his feet, but he found a receiver open with his eyes and made the throw. Four TDs in a 47-28 win. Penn State, Iowa, Big Ten, Sean Clifford to K.J. Hamlin. Look at that touchdown. Coach, I love that. It makes me get out of my chair. Every time I see a play like that. Well, he was in his high chair, got up high there. Penn State up 7-3. Then Nate Stanley. Look at that catch by Brandon Smith Jr. Yeah, that, wow. That, that may uh, got mossed or whatever they call it. Yeah, he know? got mossed for sure. <laughs> Two-point conversion, no good. Iowa up 17-12. Penn State driving. Iowa needs to stop on third down, but Noah Kane showing the power. Penn State runs out the clock. They stay undefeated, 17-12. Meanwhile, Red River showdown. Oklahoma, Texas, heated as usual. Third quarter, Jalen Hurts, Cosmic candidate. Little trickery right here. The C.D. Lamb, who had a huge day. Huge day. Flea flicker. Little tricky pass, as you said, Mike. And look at this. Look at, look at C.D. right here. He shows explosion. He shows strength. Tell you what, this guy's NFL stock just rose big time today. So he showed explosion, he showed strength. What's he showing here now, Coach? Uh, catch, break tackles. Uh, what else can the guy do? I don't know. He uh, does it all. He did it all. 171 give, yards. Give him a scholarship. Three touchdowns. I, I think he's going to keep his scholarship. Give him soon as win at 34-27, he might be getting a big-time contract in the NFL soon. As you see, uh, another close game between Texas and Oklahoma in the regular season. Uh, the last six regular season matchups decided by one score. With more from Dallas, here's our crew led by Rob Stone. Back outside the Cotton Bowl, Oklahoma remains unbeaten. They're at number six this week, and with that Georgia loss, odds are they will rapidly rise. They made a big statement here. Look, we've known about their offense, right. Coach, all season long, but it's that defense that now has them in that elite tier. Yeah, yeah Coach Riley, they had to make a change, and they did, and they made a drastic change. They brought in Alex Grinch, a guy I know very well, a high-energy guy. He expects premium placed on effort, and that's what you saw. They were relentless today. They are a legitimate national title contender now. They're a top four team, but not because offense. You knew right. they had the offense because of that defense. And I was excited to see how they would battle adversity, and they had adversity early in the game with Jalen Hurts and the turnovers. This isn't a team that's been tested yet so far until today. They answered all those questions, and to Coach's point, this appears to be like a, a complete football team. That defense was for real today. And I was excited to see their playmakers step up because really at the end of the day, that's what it's about. You need your playmakers making plays when you need them most on the biggest stage. And man, Oklahoma got that in a big way from CeeDee Lamb, Jalen Hurts, who fought through adversity, and Kenneth Murray on the defense yep. side of the ball. You know, the most impressive thing to be about this Oklahoma team is the fact that Alex Grinch just got here. And he's already improved this yeah. defense significantly. They're attacking better. The scheme's better. And then on offense with Jalen Hurts, we take for granted just because we saw and be successful at Alabama, how hard it is to learn a new system and operate it at such a high level. We knew their offense was good, but they hadn't faced adversity. They faced adversity today, played fantastic. Yeah. The defense stepped up. This is not only a team that should be in the top four, it's a team that can compete for a national yep. championship legitimately now with that defense. Yeah. Oklahoma defense, nine sacks on the day. Jalen Hurts, four touchdowns, 366 total yards. Oklahoma back in action next Saturday, live on Fox, when they take on... Mountaineers. West Virginia. You are correct, my friend. <laughs> <laughs>
Wait, Reggie, you still giving out prizes? I want you. Well, yeah, let's go. What's up? <laughs> Heard the Heisman candidate. So is this guy right here, Jonathan Taylor. Got to be the best running back in the nation. Another big one today. Wisconsin highlights coming up right after the break. Welcome back to the State Farm Halftime Show. Mike Hill Day wants that back with you. Michigan State, number eight Wisconsin coach. I, I believe people sleeping on this Wisconsin team. Well, absolutely. The way they performed, not just today, give Paul, Cret Paul Chris credit. Michigan State tried to put everything into stopping Jonathan Taylor. And really, they made big plays in the passing game as well. And their defense, fourth shutout of the season. They're giving up mm. 4.8 points a game. Go. That's in the nation. That's sick. That is uh, crazy. Number 16, Michigan taking on Illinois. And this one actually turned out to be a good one. After Michigan was up 28-0, Illinois came back, made it 28-25. But Michigan getting it done late. Yeah, good win for Michigan. They just got to be consistent. When they get those leads, they've got to keep the pedal on the metal. Keep the metal on the pedal. Remember, they got the Irish in two weeks. Florida State, number two, Clemson. Trevor Lawrence, uh, some say he lost a step. They, they, he didn't lose a step today. I'll tell you, he made plays with his arm and with his feet today, which they need to do. If they're going to be a contender for everything, he's got to play that way. Four total touchdowns. That one to Justin Ross. Clemson goes on to win it 45-14. Texas Tech, number 22, Baylor. Saw this earlier today on FS1 in overtime. Tech down 27-20, needing a touchdown to keep it alive. Jet Duffy to TJ Batch. Yeah, this was, I'll tell you what, this was, this was a heck of a game. You know, by both teams, both defenses played well. I mean, this could have gone either way. Good win for Matt Roll and Baylor. Now, after a tech field goal and double overtime, and Jermichael Hasty wins it for Baylor. They 6-0. 6-0. 
they get the job done. Slow start, but Arizona kicking it in gear late in the first half. Second half coming up. Timmy B and Spencer right after the break. Here at the break, along with Coley Harvey and Spencer Tillman, Tim Brando. And as Ballyhooed at the beginning of the game, Eason and Tate, this game has been about Tate early and yeah. Tate late. Well, I think we experienced a little bit of regression toward the mean as far as Tate was concerned. He didn't handle the pressure packages. He actually escaped into pressure many times. Again, when it was thrown his way, he didn't throw the ball away properly when he needed to, and then forced backed up in his own end zone and made a poor decision. It was frustrating for him and everyone. When it changes, when they went to the quick game, Porterfield reads getting the ball out of his hand quickly, to his tight end on the pop pass, and even this one took a little bit longer to develop, but it came as a result of a single read. You know, Noah Mazzoni, I think made a marvelous change from an offensive standpoint in that drive where he had to answer after the turnover mm -hmm. the much uh, <laughs> uh, 
the, the much of maligned move of getting rid of it with your left arm and fumbling okay. it, the gift touchdown, by making Tate get rid of the ball quickly. That was just it. I mean, again, the quick game really served them well. We talked about the experiment of 2018 when they tried to turn him into a pocket passer. Again, that maturation process, and it is a process, but he's so far down the road in terms of how long he's been here. And I know it's a new system, but he's got to get past that. In a lot of ways, even though he is a senior, he's missed a lot of action because of uh, circumstances with injury throughout his career. Coley Harvey talked with both coaches at the break. Yeah, Tim, it was actually a case of two different coaches, as you'd imagine, but it was Chris Peterson who was mostly pleased with what he saw from his defense. It was the red zone scoring for his offense that most had him a little upset. As for Kevin Sumlin, he wasn't very happy in general because of the inconsistency of his team. He obviously was pleased with the fact that his team was up. When I asked him, so why, do, why is your team up? How do you explain that he said well quite simply we're just not executing overall but if we execute a lot more in this second half we'll take care of business business excuse me and we will get the job done. well his uh, his defense did a marvelous job when they were given a short field after mistakes made in special teams and the opening play to Puka Nakua and that's the young man they wanted to get unleashed tonight, Spencer, and that's a marvelous pass again. The dime dropped by Jacob Eason. Love the matchup here on the outside. Again, man coverage against Burns. Nice job of defending and presenting your numbers, but it comes up with it on the other end. That's the kind of focus that you need. So you start off, you make your adjustments in the halftime. You want to see it pay off early because I think the game inside the game, one of seven on third down, is what the bigger issue is for Washington now. You know, they got to get more separation with their wide receivers. Sean McGrew on first down. When they were effective early, it was when McGrew and Ahmed got quick yardage on the opening play of a series. They've lost their last 10 games when trailing at halftime. Their last win when trailing at the half way back in 2015 against Southern California. They've done such a good job defensively of kind of keeping opponents out of the end zone in the latter part of stages of games this year as has Arizona but getting off to fast starts has really been their forte for Washington not doing that tonight second down and two that's Pacelli in motion Eason looking down the seam oh. that was Fuller the intended receiver just beyond his outstretched arms Jace Whitaker 17 was with him step for step. Yep, but the turf monster got the official first before and again didn't affect the play, but again, just nice job of Fuller going down. That's his out pitch guy he likes to go to. <laughs> it's been a rough night for the yeah, been Zebras night tonight. For the Zebras. Yes, sir. Timothy Schroeder, the uh, side judge, was knocked out of the game when he took a blow in special teams. So we're working minus one official. Third and two. McGrew stoned. He second, may have effort. A second effort. Man. Si I think he's a little short, Spence, by so. about a half a yard. Yep. <laughs> but I mean, this may be one of those where you just go for it. They're usually good on fourth down conversions. Back they were, they were perfect on fourth down yeah, conversions until tonight. Schooler and Wilborn collaborating on the stop numbers seven and fourteen. Schooler came screaming off that edge, man, and I thought he nailed him pretty good there. Wilborn right in his hip pocket, and Chris Peterson. It's short by about a half yard, maybe the length of the football. And they're going to check it. I think Peterson wanted them to, and they mm -hmm. are. Yeah, they're short. By a link. Yep. A little more than the length yeah. of the football. But they were perfect on fourth downs prior to not getting it done when they went for it on fourth down after they had a gift, you might recall, earlier in the first quarter. Marcel Yates' defense has been outstanding. They were five for five before tonight. Yeah, and again, I come back to that one of seven on third down, Tim. I look at the hidden math on that, and that's a, a minimum of 21 offensive opportunities they didn't get by not converting on those third downs. Double tight end look. Strong to the top of your screen. Now you see they bring Otten back over to the opposite side with Hunter in motion. They got it. They got it this time. A nice conversion and a push, baby push. And that gets them down after a gain of four inside the 35 to the 34. Wattenberg and all those guys up front, Kirkland, that's where their size really pays off big dividend. 
time. You can see the big push by the big guys. Nobody's leaning back or rocking back in their position there. Usually these guys will tip you when they're doing anything other than just man blocking or power scheme blocking. They'll sit back on their heels. They're coming ears pinned back on that play. Drew, nice. Again, gets to that second level and is hammered by Fields and Scotty Young Jr. Scotty, the uh, junior from Las Vegas. That was a big hit into the solar plexus after a gain of five. Take a listen to this. That'll make you change your mind when those pads are popping like that, man. You come up in there, you better be expecting to get hit with an attitude. Second and five. Both tight ends in again. Oh, yeah. all yet. Jet sweep time. McClatcher and Chico has the first down. Move the sticks inside the 25 at the 23. Uh, that looks, yeah, that, that looks like something you would see Arizona, Arizona do. The little jet sweep action. It comes and it hits quick. Nice edge blocking, trying to reach blocking, kicking out on the outside. I think that was just a fantastic job. Hunter Bryan, number one, did a nice job of kicking out. Kate Otten as well, both tight ends in that sequence. First and ten, here you see the play selection. Primarily run oriented. First down for East. Eight blitz. For Fuller, he's That's got fine. it. Inside the five, down at the four. So Aaron Fuller finally gets unleashed. A 19-yard gain. Boy, they've been working on Lorenzo Burns, number two, all night long of Arizona. Yeah, they, they brought pressure deep and then eventually got to him. He took a shot, but, man, I'll tell you, it was impressive to watch him stand in the pocket and deliver. Here it comes off the outside. Number one gets him right in the solar flex, but staying in there showing the courage. Tony Fields nailed him really good, man, but he... Stood and delivered. This is where Yates' defense has been outstanding, though. Inside the red zone. Ahmed. And he's buried again at the point of impact by Mason, number 90. Connolly was in there. Fields was in there. Roland Wallace, also number four. Second and goal. You remember what Tony Fields talked about? They want to populate the football. Get a lot of red jerseys around it. That's what their goal is down here. You see all of them flying around to the ball. That's what they, that's a staple for this defensive unit. Tenth play of this drive. Yet another outstanding opening drive to start a half by the Huskies. Ahmed the setback. Play fake. Oh, beautiful pass. That's touchdown. Otten the tight end. Or check that. 37, the receiver on the Receiving in, Tim uh, Jack Westover, the other tight end. That's the third tight end that they can go to rather than Kate Otten. Well done off that play fake. Westover comes over, and as Marcel looks at what happened, it was just a short motion. The tight end, he comes short motion. They ignore him. That's an assignment bust. Missed assignment. Again, on the back end, you've got to be able to be, understand Anthony Pandy was back there. Timmy, he missed him. Just didn't see him cross his face. Kind of a whiff, huh? Yep. And the extra point is good. Well-designed play and a beautiful series culminating with Westover. The third option at tight end. Breeze is in and Washington leads.
Jacob Eason finding Westover for his very first catch of the season, and it's for a touchdown. Three out of four on that particular drive. And it comes, Tim, on, on what you would expect from a Chris Peterson coach team. Tim plays 75-yard drive. That's the longest drive of the game for Washington. First career reception, and it counts for six. Everything about that series, you got to believe Bush Hamden, the offensive coordinator, loved. I mean, it was uh, like a scripted series to open a game, only this time to open the second half. A fair catch is called for. And we have a touchback. Well, download the Fox Super 6 app and play Super 6 NFL Sunday for free. A chance to win up to $250,000. This Sunday, we have two contests. Games start at 9.30 a.m. Eastern from London on NFL Network. So get those picks in really, really early. It's a new graphic, isn't it? I think it's not Terry's money anymore. It must have run out. <laughs> Notice that's not on the promo yeah, card. Yeah. So, Terry... Ran out of that ranch money he had. <laughs> East Texas. Oh, J.J. Yeah. Taylor! Boy, J.J. has been outstanding. That quick burst that he's got. Asa Turner, number 20 with the stop. That's a 14-yard gain. Great blocking on the outside by the left tackle, Donovan Light. Just whamming down, man. Just creating a nice lane to go through. Big Donovan Light, 78. 6'4", 315 pounder on that left side. Here's Tate. When you've got him backing up, it's a different story. He's uh, he's outstanding when he's moving, but moving towards the line of scrimmage. Joe Tryon was uh, bringing the heat as he did early in the game as well. Well, Tate is motioning like he wanted the receiver to come back opposite direction. But now, listen. You see those seats right <laughs> yeah, there? I'm him, thinking yeah. it's family. It's family weekend here. <laughs> I'm wondering what family got those seats great angle though it is a great angle Tate is now 8 out of 16 for 121 yards nothing doing Josiah Bronson number 90 with the stop right at the point of attack third down after a loss of a yard Maybe if Cunningham checks out of the game, see if they can find some of those wide receivers again. It was so effective in the second quarter for Tate when he really turned his game on. Nice screen. Yeah, got it set up. Don't take the one lead. Got to read your block, so man. Michael Wiley is going to be pushed out of bounds. You make a great point, Spencer. You wanted him to cut it up, didn't you? Yep, absolutely. You got, you got blockers out in front of you, man. You got to understand where to run it's all about influence about understanding your reads the center lets the guy slip got to get out in front of him man and make great decisions it's all about instincts as a running back so a fun butt formation coming for aragon aaron fuller who muffed a punt earlier is back deep normally very sure-handed back there This will back him up, but he'll take it on the fly nice. and go down on the fly. Great work in coverage by Arizona. Jarius Wallace down there, number three to make the stop. 38-yard boot, no return.
friend and teammate of yours, Spencer, could really spin it, as they like to say. Yeah, we used to call him one dog, man. Warren Moon, you sit behind him <laughs> in practice. When the ball would come out of his hand, he used to manicure his fingernails. You would literally hear this sound come yeah. off when it came off, and it reminds me of the current quarterback right now, Eason. He's got a big arm similar to what number one did, and they both can fire that ball. Yeah, we, we thought the same after watching Khalil Tate <laughs> chunk it around yesterday. That fast Friday practice of Arizona's too. Here's McGrew. Different style of quarterback, obviously, but a magnificent arm in the possession of Khalil Tate. A nice run by Sean McGrew. Chase Whitaker making the stop after a gain of eight. And look at Khalil Tate there. McGrew just fit, did a nice job of running through some arm tackles. But this guy right here has got to find a way to get his focus back and execute. Now the quick game is going well. I think Noel only is going to play within the parameter of what's going to net a win today. But that's still a part of his game has got to evolve. Second and two, McGrew ahead for a first down. That'll be a penalty there. Late flag as he went down at the 26-yard line after a gain of six. Colin Schooler with the tackle. Player down, too. Yep, in the uh, Washington backfield in Arizona, Wildcat is down. Haven't been able to detect a number as yet. Right. Whistle foul. Yep. Illegal blindside block. That's right. Offense number 87. Half the distance to the goal. Replay second down. Mm -hmm. Tim, I was talking to our officiating crew early today, and I said, what's the one play that's been a conundrum for you this year? And it's this blindside call right here. You can see it coming from the right side of your screen with an ear hole shot there. It's Tristan Cooper, who's their big-time hitter on the edge there at that spur position. He's up and walking off on his own power. Shot recap of this game. Anzarike started it with the block punt to get the first gift of three. Then Khalil coming alive in the second quarter, hitting Jamari Joyner for a touchdown. And then Jack Westover to open the third quarter, culminates a nice long drive to open the second half for Washington. And here we are at 20 to 17 in the Pac 12 after dark. McGrew the setback after the penalty. 
And he's ahead to about the 14 yard line a pickup of three Scotty Young Jr. with the tackle. Great job by Colin Schooler the Mike linebacker blowing that up and Chris Peterson backed up. This is the worst starting field position they've had at the 12 yard line all night long and this is let's see them navigate this situation. Andre Bocelli has gone split to the top of your screen. He does not have a catch tonight. Ahmed is a setback. Marcel Yates resigned to stay in the three-man front here. Got one stand-up guy, but he's bailing out. So it's a three-man rush playing zone underneath. Wow. That looked like, like a mix-up. That yep. looked like a mix-up in the route that was being run by Bocelli. Eason with a... A little despondent look about that confusion, and it's fourth and nine. They are now one for nine in third down conversions. I think what really confused them was Mike Schooler, the Mike linebacker, Colin Schooler, rather, the Mike linebacker, dropping in that zone, buzzing to that flat area. He could have had a chance to pick that ball off, and so that confused Eason. Career-long punt for Joel Whitford is 59 yards against Cal last season. He's looking for a boomer this time. Fair catch is called by Berryhill, and he's going to let it down. That really cost them some yardage. Very effective 71-yard punt. So that is his new <laughs> career best. That's a lot of activity for a punter, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Might hurt yourself with that chest <laughs> bump in there. Westover with his first career catch yeah. for a touchdown. Arizona will have it back at their own 20 when we come back. Six minutes, 55 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Happy to have you with us here on FS1 as we culminate what has been a shakedown Saturday. Perhaps better said, shake up Saturday in college football. Pressure look. Let's see if they handle the game. Nice call on the blitz. And J.J. runs into wonderful defense from Asa Turner. Boy, they identified that screen when it was coming. Stopped it for a very short gain of two. Well, it was the right call, but maybe just the wrong part of the field. If you want to get success on a screen into the boundary, you probably wanted to run that to the wide side of the field, but Washington Blitz, right play screen, just not enough space to operate. Second down and eight. Blitz coming 
Right up the middle. Tate identifies it. Well, yeah, after some apprehension, I'd say he's pretty good, wouldn't you? I, yeah. mean, I mean, he is uh, having a little conversation in the aftermath of that run with Trent McDuffie, number 22. But this kid is just so dynamic. Yeah, but you know what? I, I would like to see him make that decision even faster than he did because yeah. you had a safety and a corner covering one man, the only option he had downfield. Why it took him that long to decide to run, I don't know why it took him that long. Look out to Jamari Joyner. Ball's on the deck. Washington may have it. Ball is on the deck, and it is McDuffie that came up with it after the ball was fumbled. They will rule it, Washington football, around the 35-yard line after the turnover. Right there, it's knocked free by Miles Bryant, and McDuffie picked it up. And you can see he was down. Arizona's third turnover of the night, Spencer. Yeah, but Miles Bryant, where he came from, Timmy, is where the lesson is. The ball is out for sure, but he came from the opposite side of the field. A pure effort opportunity to create another turnover. Again, turnovers have been good to Washington. In fact, besides the opening second-half drive, the only other touchdown they have came as a result of Khalil Tate's turnover backed up in their own end zone. Yeah, this Arizona defense has only given up, only yielded that one score to open this second half. Hotman stretching it out to the top of your screen, and he's ahead for about seven. Jarius Wallace the stop. Second down and three coming up. Boy, Miles Bryant makes big play yeah, after huge. big play. Preseason all back 12 first team. And a former walk-on, and he's drawn a lot of comparisons to former Washington and current Arizona Cardinals safety Buda Baker. Second down and three. Now for the shotgun. Ahmed. It's enough for the first down. Gain of four. Well, Marcel Yates' defense backed up yet again. Yeah, but watch where Bryant comes from, Tim. He's he's high, not necessarily high in the hole, but he comes down out of that safety spot and tracks this ball all the way the opposite. Remember, the ball moves faster than the body, but he okay. tracks that body down and makes a tremendous play. That's that's called head hunting right there. Yeah, man. big time play. Kamari Pleasant has checked into the game. That running back. No Richard Newton tonight. One of the top running backs, a young kid. Come back with. McClatcher on a little reverse action that time to Chico. And he stopped just inside. Well, we'll call it right at the 20, a gain of five. Justin Beltnap, 86, with a stop. So second down and five coming up. Puka Nakua checks back into the game number 15. They've looked to him a lot tonight. That's uh, who Bush Hamden told us they were excited about getting back. Trevon Mason comes through, only a gain of two. Youngster from Arlington, Texas, by way of Sam Houston, in to make that tackle. He came right down that line of scrimmage. And knew where he wanted to go, diagnosed that play, and dived in and made a nice stop. Remember now, Washington, one of nine on third down conversions. This is another third and short. And Arizona's defense has been at their best in these situations. McClatcher moves to the bottom of your screen into the slot. On third and three. On the slant. It's caught. Fuller inside the five at the four. That's a first and goal. Sometimes you don't need a lot of coverage space. Chase Whitaker back there, Timmy, for Marcel Yates on the defensive side. Too much of a cushion for a guy that has a noted skill set. Fuller can go get the ball. He's not the biggest guy in the world, but he, he can track it, get skinny if he needs to, come down that line. He's got great courage. Now they go the old eye set. Ahmed will dot the eye, take the pitch. There he goes. First contact and in. Touchdown, Washington. He scored in there despite a big shot by Scotty. 
Young Jr. Listen. Well, they used Westover, who caught this first pass for a touchdown this year, as the fullback with that initial block. And then after that big hit, yeah, the forward progress kept him going. It was Scotty and three safeties that beamed him up, and he knocked him back instead of Scotty. Peyton Henry with the extra point. So the Huskies now have taken a 10 point lead with 2.41 remaining in the third, and it all began with that amazing play by Miles Bryant going from one side of the field to the other as you documented. Well, he did a fantastic job of number one understanding that Tate, the ball was coming out of his hand and he found the guy who was intended to and he just knocked it out. I mean, that's what you're all about. It's all about capping it off with the touchdown. This is an effort. Get a little help from your Huskies there and mush them. Get into the end zone for a score. Well, a lot of free publicity for Reggie Bush and Matt Leiner whenever that happens. <laughs> whenever there's a push, you know, a push into the end zone. Doesn't seem to matter whether it's a running back or a quarterback. Any combination thereof. And it was, oh, by the way, illegal back then. Oh, yeah. It's now legal. <laughs> well, I called it a mush. You know, because they're Huskies. And they're little, little yeah, players. I like that. I caught, I caught that. <laughs> Postseason baseball in full swing. More than its share of drama coming tomorrow. The ALCS continues. Aaron Judge and the Yankees will take on the Astros in game two. Asahiro Tanaka with six scoreless. No runs yielded by the Yankees. Only gave up three hits to Houston's potent offense in game one. We'll see what happens in game two. There were three homers by the Yankees. There are the starters. Paxton against Verlander for game two tomorrow on FS1. Well, Astros bats awakened to close the last series, but the uh, first series, but man, they just fell asleep again. It's the Yankees. Tate to Taylor. Now this is a big time response drive now for Arizona trailing by 10. And the opening play goes for 22 yards. Well, what does this play have in common with all the other successful plays? One, two, three step, drop the ball, it's coming out. It's a single receiver read, quarter field read, Get it out of his hand. Take all the decision-making away. Listen, Tate's going to be a great quarterback one day at some point, hopefully, if he decides to ingest everything that it takes to be a great quarterback and make decisions like that until then. You just win with him the way that you can. Gain of seven for Taylor. It certainly helps it when J.J. Taylor is at his best. And he looks to be the nice. Over nice, the middle nice. again. That one is caught. Taken in by Peterson. Cedric Peterson's third catch of the night. Quick game, Tim. Quick game, quick game. One, two, three step drop. The ball is out of his hands. And let your big skill position players make plays. Big, long rangey wide receiver. That's decision making at its best. 22 yards in the air, then 29. Now, wide receiver screen. Coming out of the backfield, Michael Wiley, who's used as much as a receiver as he is a running back. MJ Tafisi, number 53 with the tackle. Freshman of, that, uh, of some influence for this Washington team out of the state of Utah, and it's MJ Tafisi that's also down. He delivered the blow and absorbed it, too. He's spilling and giving it all, man, out there on the field. This guys are getting after it. Hope he's all right there. Yeah, they're going to have to. Yeah, there's some concern. Yeah, there's some major concern here. Chris Peterson out to check on the youngster. And a lot of uh, silence from some of the Washington players. The reaction of the training team that's out there is, is what's precipitated all this concern, and that's why Peterson's out there so quickly. Unless you're actually right in front of the young man, you just don't know. And you can see they got the card out there quickly. Big drive right now underway for Arizona. We have a stoppage in play, and our concern now is for the freshman youngster.
We welcome you back. MJ Tafisi on the turf, and they got the stretcher first, but they had called for the cart, and it was on its way out as we went to break, and you can see virtually the entire team now out there to check on their fallen brother. There are those moments when we are reminded of how difficult a game this can be from time to time when you strap it up. And it affects really both teams. Those in the stands as well. Oh, yeah. And the actual contact itself, when you saw the play occur, you know, pictures don't always tell you what the entire story is, but when uh, the training people got out there and they gave the signal for the stretcher, you knew right away that this was of great concern. He's coming in from the right side, Tim. Right and there. It, and the force on top of him doesn't look like his teammate landed on him with the full force of it. But his eyes were closed, yeah, though. His yeah. eyes were closed. Immediately. Immediately. Mm -hmm. well, thoughts and prayers go to his family and to MJ. His hands, we are told, are moving. And that's a good sign. Yeah. Notice they're being very careful with the head and neck area. Put that orange block on there to restrict the movement of the head and isolate it. Yeah. Good to see that yeah, movement. Good to see that movement. Yep. Upper body. Been there before, Tim. It's not a good place, but again, you've got caring, loving people around you and teammates. That's all you can ask for in these situations. Yeah. And those that are here with the Arizona program are going to be the first to do as much as they possibly can to help this young man with the facilities here. We mentioned this is one of the young guys that uh, Coach Kwiatkowski and Jimmy Lake are so very high on getting appreciable playing time out of West Jordan, Utah. And backing up Brandon Ellington, that right defensive end spot, getting a lot of playing time. And a wonderful response from the fans here in Arizona. And a nice That's good job thumbs up there. from that young man. Yeah. That's good stuff. Now you got to get back to the business of playing the game, and Arizona is trying to respond to Washington's two quick scores here in the third quarter with a nice drive of their own. And with the ball at the 13 yard line, facing a second and six. Now the difficult truth is you got you got to have a snap and clear mentality get back in the game in a hurry. Pressure off the edge. Tate's in trouble and down he goes. Flag comes down. Could that be a horse collar perhaps? Ryan Bowman was a little high and around the back of the helmet. Many times when it looks like a collar, it might not be. When it looks that way, though, it could be called. We'll wait and see what the... Officials tell us. Well, Ryan Bowman diagnosed, Bristol, diagnosed the play. Face mask. Got him with the face mask. Uh -huh. Yep. Half the inch to the goal. Automatic first down. I thought it might have been a horse collar. It was a face mask. Well, clearly you got him around the face mask. But I, I think, you know, just from a pure, pure football standpoint, just to watch Bowman come in there and diagnose that play was impressive. Just needs to be more careful about when he grabs him. Grab him around the sh shoulder pads, the shirt, somewhere else other than the face mask. Well, that's seven yards worth of penalty, but more importantly, a first down. 
Peterson in motion. Taylor. Nice oh, yes. Nice. JJ. Another payday. Flag down. They may have got Thomas Reed at the X receiver, number 16, for holding out there, but that yeah. takes nothing away. Holding. Offense, number 16. Ten-yard penalty. Replay, first down. Great call, partner. Right on top of it here. You can see him on top of that inverted yep. bunch formation. He grabs around the shoulders and again, not even necessary when you got a guy so athletic back there can make people miss with the spin move. The move is still worth it, man. He's, this kid's got more moves than yeah. X-Lax, yeah. man. He's, <laughs> he's outstanding. Well, you got him going tonight. <laughs> Something about this late start time gets you, uh, get you a little loopy. Those man. Spencerisms are going. You waited way too long for this kickoff tonight. <laughs> oh, he, he never saw any no, pressure. Did not. Pressure off the backside. And guess who? Ryan Bowman and Joe Tryon. The two together getting the job done in a big way on Tate. He looks a little gimpy coming out of there after that sack. Ryan Bowman, you can see him in a wide nine technique. That's tough on a tackle. Jordan Morgan trying to block him. Goes right around the outside of him. Tate never saw him. Didn't have the presence of nine to mind to know that pressure there. Believe me, two plays prior to that, if a guy gets me a face mask, I'm going to know where he is. Second and goal for the 24. A steady diet of uh, 21 might be in order, don't you think? Yeah, his motor runs hot, man. He runs at a different level altogether, and I like his stature. He's a small guy, compact. Got great moves, obviously, and Kevin Summers got a little live wire there. You know, he was talking a little bit about Darren Sproles back in the old days at Kansas when he was in the Big 12 Conference. He's got a kid that reminds me a little bit of Sproles. 112 Kansas yards. State, brother. 12, 112 yards on the ground for him. And we've come to the end of three. This is a big play coming up to open the fourth quarter when we return. Kevin Sumlin's team is down 10. We're after dark. Spencer's got all of his uh, his best material waiting for the fourth. Trust me when I tell you that. I'm here too next week. <laughs>
We open the fourth 10-point game. This, as you like to call it, Spencer, is an inflection point. It really is. And if you know the history of Kevin Sumlin, I guarantee you, Lomazzoni has got something in his back pocket as a result of that relationship that is for these particular situations. Here's a diamond, inverted diamond with a receiver outside of it. I guarantee you Washington hadn't seen this look before. To the field, movement. There you go. Tate. Again, plenty oh, of time. Gonna hold he just holds on to the ball too long. Flag down, and he unloads with his left hand again. That's been the, the sequence, hasn't it, when he's had too much time, issues occur. When it's instinct, he's Holding outstanding. Offense number 78. That penalty will be declined. Fourth down. So now it's a fourth down. And do you take the points or do you it go It looks on? like they're going to. Yeah. But, again, it's about trusting your quarterback in this yeah. situation, man. I'm not making excuses. I know Kevin Summers, if he gets within five, he's going to take a shot down here because he, he knows he's got a dual-threat quarterback. And for most of them, if they're executing, the playbook does not shrink. It expands. And I've seen it happen too many times. But, you know, you got a guy who makes poor decisions like that, Tim. It puts you in a bind. It's about Ever, trust. Everson will kick the field goal. And he gets that one just through the right upright. On that previous play, Spencer, Washington, outstanding coverage. Well, it's not bad. And they have a switch route, an underneath route going. So they got man, but you can Ooh, win. Yep. You got number one underneath there making his way in, but he, his eyes are so focused upfield, and he doesn't see him. And he tries to maybe make something happen on his own to the singles receiver side, and that's not where the opportunity is going to be. Yeah. Drew Dixon was the guy. Yeah, that, no, no was was trying, yeah, yeah, he's he trying to talk to him right now. Says, yeah. dude, what are you looking at? Yeah. Drew Dixon was there for a moment. You just have to have some trust, and that I'm sure is what this conversation's all about. That's some good hard coaching going yes, on it right is. there now. Yes, it is. And it looks like he's accepting it too, which is encouraging. That may be a little reluctant compliance there. Those are two key words. Two key words. You know, they have a big streak of first and second round defensive backs in the history of Washington football. And they've had some good coverage in key situations of down and distance time. Another one through the end zone for a touchback. It is a one score game. Just underway fourth quarter, but now the onus is on the Arizona defense to stop what has been a very successful Washington offense here in the second half. It really has, and again, I think whatever has gone awry for Arizona has been self-inflicted. Again, I have to go back to the opportunities of how Washington has scored to this point. Absolutely. Khalil Tate fumble backed up, muff punt, and what should have been a block punt. Those opportunities gave them great field position. They converted points off of that. The first half drive, the first drive of the second half, impressive. Other than that, I think uh, the bottom line is Arizona gave them those opportunities. Sean McGrew is the setback. Under center this time, Eason. And he goes with a quick pitch towards the boundary. McGrew. Boy, he has a quick burst. He gets it. Out to the 35, enough for a first down. Stopped by Scotty Young, Jr. Well, Scotty gave him a nice little love tap on the way out. His arm may be stinging a little bit after that one. Hmm. This is a Washington team trying to rebound and stay relevant in the Pac-12 after their loss to Stanford, a very disappointing one on the farm last week. After beating USC and beating them pretty good at home the week prior. Amari Pleasant in the backfield. Play fake to him. Eason. Oh, what a howitzer he has. How about that pass? Man, that was just on a rope to Jordan Chin, number 82. And Chase Whitaker, the boundary cornerback, was the victim on that play. Again, I'm not sure. It looked like he was a little bit cavalier for me in terms of his coverage. Great protection up front to give the big arm some time. Eason to diagnose what's going on. It's a single safety look, so nothing there, but his receiver and the opportunity. Ball well placed. Ahmed, the setback. Burrows down to the 22. Really like Ahmed's style, but he's, he's a sudden back. You know, he's got good speed. You know, he's not a Miles Gaskin, but the bottom line is this: he is productive. I like his build, the way he's put together. It's real lean, felt. 
By the way, that was Chin's first catch of the year to go along with Westover's first catch of the year. A lot of that first. was for a touchdown. A lot of first tonight. <laughs> well, they're finding some new guys that can get some separation. Good for Washington. Got it. Right there. Nice. That is touchdown. That's Aaron Fuller. Boy, that pass was put only where it could be put for the receiver. Those are the type of acrobatic adjustments that this guy makes. He's his favorite target for a reason. Over the shoulder, fading back to the route upfield. <laughs> Great concentration. Here you see number two in the slot. Inside release, a little shake move. It's a fade, but he tracks that fade over his shoulder and just grabs it. Timmy, this is perfectly placed. Oh, he does a nice oh. job of holding on to it too, Spencer. Getting control of it, holding on to it through the catch in the corner of the end zone. And now Peyton Henry for the extra point. Now you know why that was such a key opening play of the fourth quarter when they didn't convert. Those were earned points, Timmy. Earned yeah. points on that drive. Huskies offense finding some new weaponry. Thirty-four to twenty. Not quite two minutes gone by here in the second half. Coley Harvey on the sidelines. Spencer Tillman up here with yours truly, Tim Brando. Happy to have you with us. Act twelve after dark after a shake-up Saturday in college football. You see Eason, a very quick and efficient two out of two for sixty-one yards and touchdown. As you said, a well-earned drive. They've had two of them tonight. One to start the second half and one now to start the fourth quarter. Well, the story, though, Washington's had four drives in the second half. They've scored three touchdowns and one punt. <laughs> and just as was the case after the fumble by Tate led to a gift touchdown, they find themselves, Arizona, in the same spot that they were in in the first half in a must-succeed moment No in this question game. about it. You know, Washington has totally flipped the script here in terms of momentum and emotion and obviously points on the board. Taylor in the backfield. Got him. And again on the slant. He was high with it. And J.J. Taylor in space. That could have gone for a lot of yardage after the catch. That's some of the creativity, of course, that we were talking about earlier among some of these back. J.J. Taylor in the slot alignment, the running back. He just threw that ball high and away, man. And again, that's just about execution or lack thereof. 
Taylor gets it out to the 28 yard line. You know, I was watching uh, Big Noon kickoff today from Dallas Spencer, watching Urban Meyer go on and on about what you need from your quarterback leadership, intelligence, a will to win, and, and physicality. Competitive yep. And physicality. Yep. And all of that is within the possession of Khalil Tate. This is now that moment where he has to exercise that kind of leadership. We've got an injured yeah. player. That's Cody Creason, he's gonna 76. Have to, to your point, he's going to have to do it without him, at least for this next play, because Cody is one of the more athletic guards that he has on that team that he used to pull in the run game. Yep. Looks like he's okay, though. He's shaking it off. <laughs> one of the seniors of that offensive front, Noah Mazzoni looking on. Known him for a long, long time. So many years spent in the SEC and then over to UCLA with Coach Moore and now back with Kevin Sumlin again. Taylor in the backfield, third down and seven. Washington brings only three, eight in coverage. Tate. He have anybody. You know that determination or willingness to make a decision, whenever he's been in the position of scrambling towards the boundary, Spencer, I mean, the, the play's gone for nothing. Well, give Washington credit. They've cracked the code on their intermediate passing game. I mean, they play the man. They played them combination zone. There are no open receivers down the field. You know, one of the things we noticed in the Colorado game, Barry Hill, whenever he got into a scramble mode, Barry Hill found a way to get open coming back towards him. He's he's not been able to get much extension between receivers and the defenders of Washington. Their secondary has done a great job. That boot will go out of bounds around the 35-yard line. Boy, they are in need of a stop here. Game is on the line when we come back. Thirty-four to twenty, our score. Washington with the ball, and uh, Colby Harvey has more on uh, Aaron Fuller, who made that marvelous catch a moment ago to give him a two-touchdown lead. Colby, yeah, well, Tim, he's been doing that a lot this season. He's had some really acrobatic catches, and when I asked Bush Hedman, the uh, the offensive coordinator, about that earlier this week, he said that that's he actually sees that from uh, from Fuller in practice, and of course carries over to games. 
On first down, McGrew. This is a huge series here, Spencer. Is uh, Scotty Young is playing like it is. He came up and forced that time. Next did. job of keeping the damage minimal. Give another opportunity on the offensive side if they can stop, force Washington to punt. Well, Washington's been really in gear in the second half. And uh, I just, you know, you look at Easton Spencer and you keep thinking, boy, oh, boy, if, if he can get more separation from some of these receivers, and he's used two of them that have never caught a pass in tonight's, until tonight yeah. in their arsenal. This is a little out pattern that's caught. And it's Jack Westover with his second catch of his career. His first one was for a touchdown to open this half. That's a gain of four. But boy, oh, boy, if he gets a little separation with his receivers, there's no telling what he might do the rest of the season. Well, he's impressive again, and I think he doesn't have a lot of weapons, but you know he's got the measurables to be sure. Just a tall, rangy, big arm quarterback that can see the entire field. And he can run it too. Yeah, he can. He's, he's more mobile than most people think. Third down, six. Big play here for the Arizona defense. Out of the shotgun, pressure off the edge. Looking for Nakua. He's got it. And then some. Puka Nakua won't go down. Finally down at the 10-yard line. <laughs> Roland Wallace finally hauls him down. This is the kid that Butch Hamden was telling us about earlier in the week. And what a coming out party. Christian Roland Wallace. Again, he's 5'10", 198. He's a freshman, though, Timmy. So the big fella's picking on the youngster on the corner out there. And it paid a big dividends. Big time yardage gain. Let's see how they respond backed up against their own end zone. Three catches, 97 yards for Puka Nakua in tonight's game. Go back to McGrew. Tony Fields with a stop. And you see, this is an emotional game, college football. Flag is down. And you could just see the collective shoulders of the Arizona defense slumber as that last series for their offense ended the way it did. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number four, Arizona, his first of the game. Out the news to the goal. Automatic first down. And Roland Wallace, who was beaten on that prior yep. play. Yep. And Marcel Yates is taking him out. And that's why it's so important. You hear us talk about it. Sounds cliche, but it's so true. As you look at Marcel there, you, you got to have a snap and clear mentality. When that play's over, it's over. You can't let it carry over to the next play. Yeah. Oh, oh, back of the, he he yep. was retaliating. Yeah, he was responding. <laughs> that was a nice acting job. Yeah, that was Trey Adams, 72, yeah, 72 that initiated the tackle. it. Yeah. you got to keep your composure. And that's touchdown. That's costly. Ahmed. And the air out of the balloon comes out at Arizona Stadium. Second touchdown tonight, fifth of the season for Ahmed. <laughs> we touched on it at the very start of the fourth quarter. Third and six in a positive position. This was the catch that led to the trouble, and it was over Roland Wallace, by the way, the same young man that committed the personal foul. And then after that, hello, how do you do? Henry's extra point. Oh, the crossbar is kind. The crossbar is kind. And Washington extends their lead.
Now you see the second half comparison, and that really, Spencer, tells the story. Yeah, it really does. And if you want to go deeper, you know, Washington scored a TD on their last three drives, 10, four out of the last five in the second half. So they've made the most of their offensive opportunities and made the most of the mistakes on the part of Arizona. It's been a tale of two halves, and they did a great job to Chris Peterson and his crew making adjustments, coming out strong, scoring on the initial drive of the second half. I'll tell you, it's been lights out ever since. It was really two stories in the first half. Uh, Arizona dominated the second quarter, mm -hmm. Washington the third, and then emotionally unable to get beyond that, uh, the Wildcats uh, just struggling and not being able to make some plays. Well, our All-State Mayhem moment, and this was one of those gifts in that... Unfortunate first quarter for Khalil Tate. And again, credit Washington's defense for much of it. That little gift led to a touchdown to Wellington and our All-State Mayhem moment. And then a little extra mayhem. You got to hold on to your shoe, Garo. <laughs> you know, you just have to hold on to your shoe. That was tipped into the air and intercepted by Bowman. You know, and that's just one of those emotional moments, Spencer. It is a kid's game. These are not professionals. They are collegians. And when the air is let out, we sometimes see this. We do have a flag down after the interception. We love all these kids. You know, we coach. They get coached hard, and they get permission to be coached hard. And we can be tough, too, but we love them all. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number 52 on the intercepting team, his first of the game. 15 yard penalty, first down. So that'll go against Nagata. Ariel Nagata, 52 in the aftermath. Wonderful play by Bowman. Yeah, Bowman. Just incredible. Looked to me as though he had control. He's in see, good hands. See if this hang angle is uh, is better. Oh, yeah, his arm's underneath it. That's a good catch. I don't know. Timmy? I like it. I thought he yeah, completed yeah, I it. I think so. I think that left hand was underneath it enough. He's got his big old mitts around it. Control. But that young man right there, when he's on, when his game is on, I mean, he's as dynamic as any player in the country. Unfortunately, tonight, Washington... Did a number on him, I thought, mentally in the first quarter. He rebounded in the second, but then the air let out again in the third quarter. There's and, no uh, question. You, you take a look at the, the athlete that he was against Colorado, and I mean, it was it was really impressive to watch him. It takes you back to 2017 when he rushed for 1,411 yeah, yards. Absolutely. Yep. Again, he was the West Coast Heisman hopeful, and the, the, the talent is certainly there. The ability to harness it and listen, he's gone through a lot of coaching changes too. When you're a veteran player and you've gone through coaching changes along the way, it's it's not an easy path. But a lot of football still in front of him and in the Pac-12 South, many more opportunities yet to come. I think he'll continue to learn, and Kevin Sumlin is a great guy to learn from. And if there is a, a guy that can navigate these difficult waters with quarterback, it's that guy right there. Kevin Sumlin. He's been around some pretty Heady coaches that understand the emotional state of young players these days. They love this young player. Yep. They love the backup, Grant Goodell. Let's see if we see him get the feeling that we may in the next series. Ahmed goes ahead for six. There he is, throwing it, warming it up. The young man out of the woodlands, uh, make no doubt, they're going to get players here at Arizona and a lot of places for. Kevin Sumlin to find them, including places like the Woodlands yep. in Texas. I watched him play a lot of football just north of Houston, far north Houston, right by the airport. He's The Woodlands have produced some great talent over the years. Grant Irons, Caroline's son. And... Oh, yeah, that's yeah. going back. Yeah. Second down and four. McGrew again. Hey, Jude! Nice penetration from Pandy. Pick up a four. Pandy coming through number eight. To make that hit, it will be third down and a yard to go. Well, you look at Washington at this point after presuming this uh, victory is in their hip pocket. They get Oregon next at home. Then a week off in Utah. And they won this league with three losses a year ago. Yep. 
Eason. I'm not sure. I don't think he got it. Yeah, he being out here. He's short of it. About a half yard. You know, they're not clearly not in a mode where you're thinking about anything other than just eating up this clock. But just to show you how total and complete his game Eason has been for Chris Peterson. He's four for four, 114 yards passing in the fourth quarter. So that's perfect. And he's got it augmented with a nice run game as well to help balance out what they've been doing here in the second half. It's been impressive. <laughs> Jacob having problems with his mouthpiece. <laughs> That's about the only issues he's yeah, had this yeah. half. He's been cool with the leather. No doubt about that. And here's uh, Mr. Perfect, Peyton Henry, who has not missed all year. This from 27. And the lead is up to 24. In a game when you wake up tomorrow, you say, oh, that was a blowout. Well, for three quarters, not really. It appears the decision has been made by Noel Mazzoni and Kevin Sumlin to give Grant Gannell an opportunity with the, the remaining time we have left. 44 to 20 our score now. Washington in complete control as you look at the quarterback comparison. Much ballyhooed as we came on the air. Eason has just been sharp and efficient. And Tate has been hot and cold or cold, hot, and then cold again. You look at that 2-0 and in that category about touchdown to interception ratio and that can be a difference maker there. Well, it looks like uh, J.J. Taylor's going to bring it out. Looking to make a big play. He's run down at the 20-yard line. <laughs> He's explosive, man. He's got some speed. I'm interested in seeing Grant Gannell here. Pac-12 Freshman Player of the Week in his first career start against UCLA. First true freshman to win a first career start at Arizona since Willie mm -hmm. Tuatama back in 2005. He's thrown a 75-yard touchdown pass in both games he's played this season, so he's got a big-time arm. More of a traditional drop-off pass. Here. Gets it out quickly to Michael Wiley. Michael Wiley's one of those other backs that's sudden, too. You know, the little slight moves that they make to get the additional three or four or five yards when you swear they've got them dead to rights on defense. Second down and six. Wiley again. Should have enough for the first down. 
up to the 31 yard line they'll move the sticks. Washington content with the three man front here they're playing a lot softer than they were earlier. Bronson and company just playing two gap technique making sure that they don't get gashed. And trying to get out of here with the win. Still gaming and dealing though. Yeah they are. Here's Goodell. He can motor two. He gets up to the 37 yard line so a gain of six. Second and four. Spencer, you know, watching this Washington game and seeing how they're playing, they they managed to get off the field tonight, which was the problem against Stanford. You know, the Washington offense just didn't have as many plays last week as, as they did this week. Wiley ahead again for another first down. Yeah, Stanford did an excellent job of stealing possessions away from them, Timmy. Again, there was a, if, I'm, if memory serves, there was like an 18 point differential in yep. time of possession. Right. So that was a big reason why. But tonight, it was uh, it was important that they took advantage of Arizona's mistakes. Well, he laid the leather to yeah, Miles Bryant right there, didn't yeah, he? He finished. Pressure off the edge, Gunnell on the curl. <laughs> Got his man. That's Jamari Joyner. <laughs> Had the touchdown catch earlier for Arizona. That's 12 yards and another first down, and they're moving it down the field, taking advantage of those holes that Washington is giving them in their defensive setup. Joyner looked like a whirling dervish on that last play. He's about spun out of his jersey. Nathan Tilford is now checked in the backfield. Here comes pressure. Yep. Nice call. Yeah, he could get it ex could executed, though. He was checking down to try to find Tilford. Yeah, it was a screen. It was a call screen, and the pressure was coming. It's a perfectly designed call. There he is, 33. Yeah, 33 was sifting through there, and it got guys out in front of him. Dominic was out in front of him, and... Brandon Wellington knocked the ball down. Pressure up the middle. Quick slam, and it's dropped. Joiner had it. Right between the one and the zero. And I think he's still running, too, because he was looking at man coverage. It established himself inside. Again, that ball is out. The quarterback knows he where he's going and just let it hit him right in the face. You guys, youngsters watching at home, that's why they want you to extend those arms and pluck that ball out of the air. So if it does bobble, you have a chance to catch it on the second hop. Washington had five of those last week against Stanford. Five drops just like that. Quick curl yet again. That was almost an alligator arms catch there by Jalen Johnson, number nine. I don't know. I'm not sure he really wanted that one. Those gator arms out there are like, I'll take it, but I know I'm about to get hit. He quickly snatched it and got on the ground. He knew he was about to be hit. Tilford, nice spin, spin, baby, spin, touchdown. 25 yards from Tilford. Timmy, you talk about vision and being able to run the inside zone read. You got a guy on the edge. He does a nice job of spinning after initial contact and bounce outside and gets vertical. That's what you need to do, north and south to score. Nice job of finishing, but better job of instinct and running to find the end zone. That was one time where Washington, in its perimeter, just did not wrap up. Some missed tackles there to aid and abet the score, but... Give Nathan Tilford a lot of credit. I love the spin move, Spencer. I know you do, too. Run where they ain't, but again, sometimes it's all about athleticism. Turner had him squared up, but Tilford just spun out of that. Got to wrap up if you're going to finish. I just love how he's got it. Even though he sees the end zone, he's got that ball high and tight like Tiki Barber used to carry it. Yeah. Ball security, <laughs> baby. It's about ball security. By the way, I think C.D. Lamb did a lot of that yeah, earlier yeah, today. He did. Uh, Texas is still trying to catch something besides air, trying to tackle him. Every one of his touchdowns, Spencer, there were at least three missed tackles by Texas no today. No question. Number five is now wearing number 98 for Washington. First touchdown since a minute six was remaining in the second quarter when Arizona had that momentum going into the break. And Tate was in the middle of a hot streak. With two drives, but uh, they've been silenced since. And it's been you see bit. what Grant Gunnell can do. Okay. Granted, that defense was giving him some things, but he, he took advantage of it.
Setting up for the onsides. Well, let's see. That's well, picked up, speared out of the air beautifully there by Kyler Gordon. And boy, what a half for the transfer portal young man from Georgia, Eason. So we talked about him being perfect in the fourth quarter, four for four, 114 yards passing on a couple of drives, but his eyes, you see him control the safety with that one, then go to the out. Nice job of understanding where his open receiver is, and then even when it's man coverage, being able to manipulate the safety with his eyes and go ultimately where he wants to go with the ball. You know what you love about him, Spencer? And you, you hear coaches talk about it all the time. He's got a gun for an arm, but he can control his heat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, it's like he, a pitcher. You know, you can take a little bit of speed off of it when you need to. Ahmed again. Well, he's been outstanding on the ground. Just a wonderful performance by him tonight. Tony Fields making the tackle. Ahmed, one of the more well-conditioned athletes you'll see, man. He's, he's an instinctive runner. He's got a lot of natural skill and ability, lean cut guy. But he's kind of like smoke through a key code, hole two. He can work it through there and find space when it doesn't seem like there is any. 80 yards on the ground. He's been on the receiving end as well. At least a threat as a receiver. Here he comes on the stretch play. Adding to that number of 80. Give him 85 now after that run. Stopped by Roland Wallace. Well, Washington can still win this league as they have in the past. Oregon coming up next week. Huge a big game. one in Eugene. Then Utah and Colorado in Boulder. And it closes out with Washington State in the Apple Cup game. And... Wazoo coming off that 10-win year a season ago, but they could not handle Washington. Almost always, the elements come into play when those two meet in late November, and Mike Leach's team has just not been able to solve the weather circumstances when the matchup of power versus finesse is taking place. Here's McGrew off the pitch. And he's down near the 10-yard line before being stopped by Fields. Well, uh, Here are the standings in the north, Oregon, now with a full two-game advantage in the loss column. And I tell you, I was impressed with what I saw last night. Herbert seems to be mm -hmm. really getting some traction right now with that offense of theirs. Well, again, people may get upset at this, but I think Oregon is one of those teams that best mimics what the SEC does, and they bring that kind of a counter approach to this conference, and they're having great success with it. Now, it doesn't Mr. hurt Ball. when you're in the top five in recruiting. Yep, no question. And we're not talking about a region of the country. We're talking about the entire country. Nice vision. <laughs> oh, that. Another touchdown for Ahmed. And he is now with his third touchdown. That may have gotten him close to 100 for the night, if not over 100. Old school, Edgerton James. Yeah. Slow two, fast yep. through. Right. Patience. It's all about patience. Here's the patients coming right here. Watch him diagnose what's going on. An if blocked by the guard opposite. Nothing there, so he decides to go the opposite direction. But it's all about the patients. Conflicting reads by the on guard that went right where the hole was supposed to be. But the center was beaten, color flashed, and he went the opposite direction. That's yeah. instinctive running there. One yard shy of 100 for the evening. He's got 99. Had a career high 153 and a touchdown on just 17 carries. And that win over USC. Hmm. Spencer, it's been mentioned many times, and we're seeing the Pac-12 yet again in another showcase for Washington. This league has a lot of talent. It has a lot of depth. I would argue probably as much depth as the Big Ten and possibly even the SEC. The problem, no dominant team. Now, we would be whistling a different tune had Oregon beaten Auburn early in the year in a neutral site game. But... In the pure playoff privileged era that we now live, mm -hmm. if you lose a game like that early, suddenly you're off the map. You're off the landscape in terms of the national consciousness. You know, people who have opposition stance on that would say, well, it's more parity than that. But I, I, I think the difficult truth is, to your point, Tim, is they, there is not a dominant team. Right. There is not an Alabama in the West. There is not, you know, if it an was Ohio the SEC, an Ohio State. Right. You don't have that. You know, right now in the Big Ten, you're looking at Wisconsin, Penn State, and Ohio State that are all a part of the national conversation. 
That one will go through for a touchback. 2-12 remaining. Well, the Pac-12 smackdown is what it is. Four weeks in, the Pac-12 had a season-high six teams in the top 25. ASU fell out after a loss, giving the Pac-12 five in week five. One week later, ASU back in, USC and Cal dropped out, leaving us four. After Washington's stunning loss to Stanford last week, <laughs> Pac-12 is down to a season-low three. Those are the facts. You read that quick as a hiccup, Those man. are the facts. <laughs> Setting up for the screen. It goes incomplete. Wiley, the intended receiver. Eight different teams have been ranked for one plus week, tied of most any conference. And I think a lot of times you do measure the strength of a league from the bottom up, okay, not the top down. And that's one of the reasons I think the Pac 12 is truly a very deep league and has a right to say, you know, what about us? We're very competitive. Pass is incomplete. There are some teams like Washington State who's replacing a, a Garner Mish, Minshew and great quarterback. You expect to have some drop off to him, but I'm, some places there's not an explanation for why there is this precipitous drop. Let's take Washington, for example. They lost nine starters on their defense, but Absolutely. yet they managed to step up and play well against a team that was white hot on the offensive side of the ball. And you know what? Give uh, Jimmy Lake, the defensive coordinator, a lot of credit, Spencer. Former DB, he, he would not allow Khalil Tate to have uh -huh. the kind of night, mm -hmm. the kind of numbers throwing the football as he had against Colorado. And uh -huh. Tate has owned Colorado in every game that he's played. Isn't that a truth? It's kind of endemic to, to programs where if you happen to have a defensive pedigree as you look at him there, he's still coaching, man. You're not going to get beat that way. He said, we got to stop the run. we got to limit Khalil's designed runs. Must, must maintain lane integrity. And plaster to the receivers, and that means stick <laughs> cover, to them. Cover them up, stick them up. Stick to them. Chico McClatcher is back deep awaiting the punt. Look out. <laughs> he almost had a shot there after he got past that first wave. Well, Spencer, you're, we've got a flag down around the 45 as uh, poise is becoming a bit of an issue, it appears. Sumlin out to uh, talk to his guys and settle them down. I want to get your thoughts on what happened today. The Georgia loss, what that does in terms of shaking up. During their turn, holding number 21 of the receiving team. 10-yard penalty, first down. See, I... What are your thoughts about Georgia losing? How far do you think they may drop and how it affects the top four or five? Well, in the extension of our conversation just a minute ago, I don't think Georgia's going to drop as much as people think. I know South Carolina wasn't a highly ranked or ranked team up there. They were but two the, and three the, the, going into the yeah, game. Yeah, they were yeah. two and three. Not a very good team. But again, you have to look at the personnel, too. Familiarity mm -hmm. with... You know, Kirby Smart, now, just understanding exactly how they run their programs. There's a lot of intellectual property exchange there. When you're the pure the playoff privileged, your brand name, you don't drop as precipitously. That's right. And I believe, I believe Notre Dame suffers more from the Georgia loss than Georgia does today. Yep, and a close call today. Yep. See, Notre Dame needed the Georgia team to stay undefeated mm -hmm. to keep their hopes alive with the lack of a 13th data point. And the thing that's interesting, there was a time when Notre Dame could survive that. Yeah, not anymore. Not anymore. Not until they join the ACC full-time. Right. Well, that'll get Twitter going tonight at <laughs> 3 in the morning, East Coast time. You don't get the 13th data point. That'll mm -hmm. really hurt you when you're a one-loss team, and uh, there are several others. Right now, I think we're at 14 after tonight's play, undefeated teams in college football. Did Memphis go down? Hmm. Outstanding performance, uh, Jacob Sermon, by the way, in to take a knee. Redshirt freshman. The good news for Arizona is that they are still very much a young team with Kevin Sumlin in just his second year, and he'll get it done. We've known this man, Spencer, you and I, a long time. I mean, to think that he's worked, all right, for Joe Tiller after playing, at Purdue, Jim Wacker, Glenn Mason, Bob Stoops, R.C. Slocum, even Mike Price at Wazoo back well, in the day. Well, he's highly respected, and, you know, there were some history-changing events that possibly could have had him someplace other than here, but as it turns out, mm -hmm. I think he's where he needs to be. Look at that. First win 
when trailing at the half since 2015. So Chris Peterson knows he had to earn this one against Kevin Sumlin's team as they still try to continue the building of their program in year number two. And for Khalil Tate, lesson learned and uh, an opportunity to fight another day. Still so much talent. And for that young man, Spencer, I think, and that's a great show of sportsmanship. Yeah, great gesture there. Quarterback to quarterback. He's got it. And all coaches <laughs> together. Marcel Yates, who's with Chris Peterson for so many years, nine seasons, Jimmy Lake. A lot of great sportsmanship. And we wish uh, all of them well, including Khalil. And I, I really enjoyed our conversation with him. But you saw specific signs tonight of the issues that he still must overcome before this season is out. And he's got to get it rectified if he's going to continue to grow, if there's any chance that this team could recover and do well and play out the string in a much more impressive fashion than they did tonight. All right, Coley is down there with uh, Coach Peterson right now. Coley? Yeah, thanks, Tim. Uh, Coach, you know, you mentioned to me at halftime that you guys had a little trouble getting some rhythm, especially in that red zone. What happened in the second half? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we finally got a little rhythm. You know, we, we felt good if we could stay on the field. We were very poor in the red zone. We're going to go back to work there again. Really proud of our defense, how they played in that first half. And then our offense got on track, and we played like we'd hoped to play. And now, obviously, you've got uh, Oregon coming next week, important game. What did this, mean, this win mean going into that? Week? Yeah, we just, I mean, they're all hard to win in this league. And so it's nice to come down to Arizona and, Guys played hard, and as always, we learned a bunch about ourselves, and we're just trying to figure out how to take the next step. Yeah, last thing for you, uh, MJ, uh, we noticed, obviously, he had to get Carter off. Any update there with him? Yeah, we, we feel good about where he is. A lot of that was precautionary. Um, so we think we're taking him home with us, and we feel good about where he is right now. All right, that's good news. Thanks very much, Coach. Congratulations. Thank All right, thanks, Coley, to Coach for elaborating on that mm -hmm. and letting us know because we were all very much concerned and you can see the Washington contingent that made its way from Seattle and these young men getting together and it was Eason that sought him out which I thought was a wonderful thing to see and uh, speaking of that He's downstairs with Coley right now. Hey, thanks, Tim. I actually got you, Jacob. We were just commenting on the weather. But, uh, but you know, you guys uh, uh, played a team that had only given up three points in the, the last three fourth quarters that they played. How important was finishing in this game tonight? It was huge. Uh, I think, you know, we had, a, we had a good meeting in that locker room at halftime, and we came out in the second half. We played our version of football. I mean, we play like that. We're a good team. We know we can play like that. We just got to come out and execute like that every time. And I'm super proud of the guys, the way they battled back in the second half after a slow start. And just all around, everybody played played their job and, and, and did well today. Yeah, now, uh, you know, obviously you guys on offense took a lot of heat this past week after what happened with the loss to Stanford. Going into Oregon now next week, how important was it to, to get a convincing win this way? Yeah, no, it was huge. Um, you know, there's always that confidence in the game of football, and I think today was will be a big one for us. I think it was a good game to get under our belt in terms of, you know, we started slow, and we really had to get in that locker room and, and, and check ourselves, and I think the guys responded to that really well, and you know, guys made big-time plays today, and now they know that, and I think we, we can operate at a high level when we make those plays. Actually, the last thing for you real quick, you said check yourselves. How would you guys do that? I mean, it was just a lot of talk, a lot of talk. Uh, you know, guys guys communicating with each other, you know, just, just rallying. You know, a lot of it, I, I, I kind of spoke up a little bit today. I, I'm, not, I'm not one of the guys that talk a lot, but today I felt it was necessary, and, uh, you know, like you said, we came out in the second half and, and, and played great football. All right, well, congratulations to you. Back to you, Tim. All right, Coley, thank you. A great slate of NFL action is going to come your way tomorrow on Fox. Highlighted by Carson Wentz and the Eagles. They'll be taking on the Minnesota Vikings or another regional action. Russell Wilson and the Seahawks take on Baker Mayfield and the Browns. You can check your local listings for the game in your area or watch it on the Fox Sports app. Well, I want to especially say thank you to Scott Alexander, who uh, handled our content coordinating tonight under pressure and with some illness. Many thanks to both he and Brett Bender, our entire crew for Spencer Tillman, Coley Harvey, Tim Brando saying goodnight from Tucson.